We're going to listen to, to Darrell do a little bit of his control tactics today. For some reason, he came in and thought that he could just run over everybody, which drove me absolutely nuts. And I thought today would be a good time to do a really cool, quick, short live stream and listen to his ramblings. And you, I want to know what you guys think. Do you think the judge let him go too far here? I kind of feel like she was giving him more leeway because of the fact that he was supposed to be calling up witnesses and she didn't want to kick him out of the courtroom just yet. But let's watch and and we'll see. You will return for value all the charging instruments in this matter and make my exemption available for discharge of all obligations and charges connected with this case. Blah, I do not blah, dispute any blah. of the facts in the charging instruments and I would like to make a reservation of all my rights at this time. All right, thank you. The record should reflect that the individual known to this court as Daryl Brooks is present in person in custody. He is wearing street clothes, specifically a suit and tie, and he is wearing a mask. And I do not consent to being called in there. For the Noted. Noted. Mr. Brooks called a witness yesterday. There was an objection. I sustained it, but he also uh, orally moved to dismiss, and I denying the motion without any uh, further consideration or uh, discussion by the parties. I'm not those. asking for any further commentary. <laughs> we are not accepting reservations at this time. I object to that. I object to that ruling, Your Honor. Like no, for the record. I President, object to that, and we should just stop here this morning, and, fact, and pause. Like the the fact Tonight. I want to uh, state for the record that uh, I intend to appeal that judicial decision made about the motion to dismiss. Noted for the record. All right, let's bring the jury out then. Um, actually, actually I'm not done. Actually, I'm not done. jurisdiction. It still has yet to be proven for the record. <sighs> and I wanted to address the fact that with this, um, you have three witnesses that you subpoenaed. The state made arrangements for them to be here. Whatever order you want to call them in this morning is fine, but those three are here. That's what I was trying to address. Hey, I have a question. If I had t-shirts made up that said subject matter jurisdiction, would y'all buy one? <laughs> oh my goodness. We full up. Yeah, we're full up, Amanda. <laughs> Oh. Yes, right now. I'm still I know having trouble. You'll have to ask the witness. I'm still having trouble finding the file for for that particular witness. Um, yeah, call the jury in. <clears throat> so I don't I don't know how I'm supposed to. Mr. Brooks, you were well advised. These are your witnesses that the state made arrangements. You knew who was going to be called. I'm not moving past those three. I didn't, say, to to I didn't say anything about moving past the three. I know that. I, I just set a tone for today that we're going to keep moving. Okay. I simply stated I'm, I'm not ready to ask that witness questions if I can't even find the uh, paperwork. But that's you not having your paperwork on you, not anybody else. So what am I supposed to ask them? I, I can't answer that, sir. You know that's that. a rush to judgment. You can't rush me to judgment. The only thing with doing a t-shirt that says subject matter jurisdiction is I feel like I need to put his little weasel face somewhere on the shirt. And... I really hate the fact that we, we, we would be putting him on a t-shirt. I don't know. Maybe I could come up with a cool design. <laughs> Isn't it nice that he has the state as his private secretary? You know what? Well said, Barbara. <laughs> he just thinks that he's going to stop everybody. He's never held a real job in his whole life. But now, now, he's going to tell everybody how it's going to be done. Hello, Blame Blue. She said growls. I'm not wearing his face. Nope. See, me neither. I wouldn't either. We can't put his face on it. It just has to say subject matter jurisdiction only. Okay. I'll continue on the with the with, with his antics. When I'm notifying the court that I cannot find the record. Well, you did I can't very find, well yesterday I can't find without your file. So I'm saying that particular witness. How you're prepared or not is solely on you, sir. You've had all of this information out. We're at the end of the third week of trial. These are your witnesses. How I'm can not I be hold prepared it for? I'm not. So a witness is just supposed to get up there and just. I'm just no, like I, yeah. I'm not uh, gonna have this commentary. Okay? <laughs> I'm done. The jury's coming out. They're because... just supposed to get up there and like you know like like you know. <laughs> so so that's that's three. a rush to judgment. That is not a rush to judgment. It is a rush to judgment. It's clearly a rush to judgment if I'm telling you that I don't have the no, file. Right. How am I supposed to? You're attempting to delay. So no, I'm not, I'm not attempting to delay nothing. You want to come check the boxes yourself? Oh. Oh. 
You always trying to pull some fast, fast maneuvers. Rude. And uh, Miss Judge, Your Honor. Mr. Brooks, the jury's coming in. Yeah, and they, they, they the deserve to know this too. It's still issues that need to get addressed. We didn't even address everything. Mr. Brooks, I addressed all of the issues. No, I still had another one that didn't have nothing to do with nothing we just talked about. Right. There was a whole other issue that needed to be addressed that I needed to and bring we'll on the record to later. your attention. We'll I don't know, Show Poodles, because she, that would be, I don't know. We, I guess we could put her face on it. We'll address it later. It needs to get addressed now before we go any further because it's, it's an important matter. Just like the subject matter jurisdiction is important. That hasn't been proven on the record. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, just like the, rest the judge. time for evidence to be presented or arguments to be made by the parties. I can't even the jury present any evidence. You won't disregard let me put any evidence in the record. All of these statements made by judge. Mr. Brooks at this time. <laughs> All right. That's unfair what the you're doing. The court will address legal matters outside the then presence. Then we need to Everyone address the legal seated. matter that I was trying to get to. Before you, you, rush call your you know what I want to know, guys? I wish I, I wish that we didn't have so much insight on this case so that we could actually see the side that the jurors saw. Like, if only we could just wipe it all away and just view only what the jurors saw, we'd still hate him, wouldn't we? We'd still hate him. Hey, Melissa. Oh, yay. Well, we're glad to have you here. Welcome. No, witness, sir. I'm not calling any witness until I get an answer, Your Honor. You're a public servant. Mr. You're, Brooks, you're supposed to be able to answer simple questions. Mr. Brooks, if I'm saying I have to bring call it to your your next attention, witness, please. That's the stage of I have to bring at. it to your attention, Your Honor. Mr. I'm, Brooks, I'm really seeking to stop. bring an issue to your attention. I'm telling you to please. I'm asking you to please and stop. And I'm asking you because we, we have a jury present. I'm asking and you. We need to continue with the evidentiary phase of this trial. Call your next I'm witness. I'm asking you to address a legal matter, as you said, that those have to be taken outside of the jury. I will there do that at the next matter, break. There was a legal matter that needed to be addressed beforehand so we don't it. have to take up time, I will do it at time the next break. afterwards to address something that needs to be addressed now that way mr brooks the court and you yourself for the third are on time, i will address it at the next break call your next he's trying to tell her how that it should be see it's going to go this is the way we should do it see because i know you've been doing it for a really long time and i you know you've been you've been a judge and you've went through tons of this and but i'm i'm just my you know i've been in court a lot too so this is the way i think we should do it from here on out witness please are you asking me? I'm directing you to call your next witness. Your Honor, I'm, we're not going to move past this. Seeing as how you took an oath to protect the Constitution. I have your oath. I have a copy of your oath right here. The oath that you took, Your Honor. Mr. Brooks, I'd like to continue with testimony. To, we have witnesses waiting uh, for you. Please call your next witness. The oath that you swore to. Uh, no, Show Poodles. I just didn't know if I, I don't know if she would want to be associated with it subject matter jurisdiction on t-shirt that's all i was thinking but we got to come up with a good one y'all got to help me y'all think about it and then let me know and if it just needs to say subject matter jurisdiction with a really cool graphics design around it i can do that but well that's a that's a homework assignment for all of us right to protect the constitution which you are now not doing mr brooks so you're going call against your, next your sworn witness, oath you're going against your sworn oath Mr. Brooks, call your as next you, witness. As you, as you notify the jury every time when there's legal matters, we take them out, out, outside of their presence. And we're going to take testimony right now. Call your next I witness. I merely seek to put you on notice on the record for something that needs to be brought to your attention and, and to will, the court's attention. And I will address it That's at the next That's what I'm really seeking to do. It's something that shouldn't have to wait because it'll take a valuable time later. At least uh -huh. if I notify you right from the onset, you'll already know what we're looking at, and we can nip it in the bud before everything starts to roll. Mr. Brooks, it gets over, it gets I will address before it everything the starts to roll. Break. If you want to write As something down, going, that's fine. You know, like, to my clerk, I don't I know, nothing in writing. Together. Um, I know there's witnesses available and ready to go. Call your next witness. Your Honor, this, uh, Your Honor, you have to answer this question. That's you're Mr. making Brooks, a judicial determination. Call your next witness. You know what surprised me about him doing this right here was that he knew it was the day for Erica to come in, and I was just surprised that he was starting all this because he knew he could possibly get thrown into the other courtroom, and if he did. Then, hey, David, welcome. If he did, then he would risk the chance of missing to see Eric in person and do that whole control tactic with her. Yes, please. You're rushing me to judgment, Your Honor. There's no rush to judgment. There is a sir. rush to judgment. If you won't address a legal issue that I informed you that I had some legal issues that needed to be addressed before you just run right past that, Your Honor. You're a public Mr. Brooks, servant. Are you not a it public It is 9.37. Call It is 8.37. Your... Sorry, 8.37. You're right. Hi, Lisa. Call your next witness. Your Honor. You're rushing me to judgment. There, there's no rush to judgment. Call your next witness. We had please. a legal matter that needed to be addressed, and I'm merely trying to and notify I'm the court. Telling you I'm the denying onset. the request to address it at this moment. Call your next witness. You said what? 
I'm denying your request said to what? address it at this moment. Please how call. Can, how can you please? deny something that we're supposed to do before Mr. the Brooks. even comes out? <laughs> call your witness. I'm not, I'm not seeking to be disruptive. I'm just seeking to understand why we all we do this Everyone every day. Everyone is in the courtroom. Why we do this every day? Your Honor, we do this. I don't know, Darrell. Why do we do this every day? Every single day. We've done it every single day. So I'm, I'm simply trying to make sure that the court is notified. Of Put it in writing, hand discussed. it to the bailiff, and if I deem it important enough to interrupt the witness, I will. But call your next witness. How can I, how can I call a witness and write something down? And do, <laughs> you can take a minute this to write what, down what it is. I'm not asking you why to... I needed to be addressed before him. <clears throat> Mr. Brooks, that the jury is remaining in this courtroom. Call your next witness, please. Your Honor, you're rushing me to judgment. There's no rush to judgment, sir. Are you are you not a public servant, Your Honor? Mr. Brooks, do I not have oh, your own, Lord, own, they, own under 90611, this court has the authority, as you know, to call. It's not a copy or. I asked for certified copies that you said on record that you would not provide for, for no good reason. That these are three, Sir, three of your you oaths. are doing this, right and here. I repeatedly told you, you can see the jury's here. You're You're doing Just to remind everybody, while all this is going on, the jury is still in the courtroom. Doing this, I, I, listen, I, we no, need to go I'm forward. Not attempting, I'm not attempting to delay the proceedings. I'm not attempting to be disruptive. I'm merely trying to notify your honor in the court for the record beforehand that way, everyone's at least on notice of the issues that need to be taken up instead of waiting until a break or a lunch and, and things of that nature, which kills valuable time. It's which kills, but he's worried about everybody's valuable time now. No, Lisa, you really haven't missed that much, but this is a quick live today. So we're not going to be on too, too long. My authority, it's the courtroom that I'm You're presiding right. over. I'm not going to address is that this, at is, this moment. Is this not your oath? I'm not going to answer Did you questions. not swear as a public servant that you would protect Mr. the United Brooks, States Constitution? Call Did you not do that witness. three times? Your uh, oath. All of you. Here, your oath, Your Honor, as a public servant. And Mr. now you're Brooks, rushing me to judgment no when I'm doing things lawfully by trying to notify you and notify the court of issues that need to be addressed Mr. Brooks, beforehand. Mr. Brooks, we are in the issues. evidentiary phase of this trial. Your Honor, you're call your next witness. You're rushing me to judgment, Your Honor. And I object I'm to that. I'm aware of three witnesses I who object, are here. I object Call to one that. of them, please. Your Honor, I object to that. Your objection's no And, I, and I want a legal reconsideration of your ruling. If not, I, I reject that ruling and take exception to that ruling. <laughs> I request a legal or a factual basis for your ruling. A written judicial finding of fact and conclusion of law for your ruling. That's my favorite part. If not that, interlocutory, <laughs> declaratory appeal for this matter. And if not, these needs need to be stayed until this matter is before a adjudicated court of competence. Somebody come get him. <laughs> because we have not proven jurisdiction in this court as of yet. Subject matter jurisdiction has not even been proven on the record, Your Honor. I don't Look even at know him. the true nature and cause Mr. of the charges Brooks. against me. I don't even understand. He thinks he's Lawrence Fishburne, Fishburne or something. Complaint. I haven't. Your Honor, there's, there's so many he thinks issues. He's so cool. Mr. Brooks, I'm not, we will take I'm not attempting to, Mr. Brooks, to, to be disrespectful in any way. We need to continue. To delay the proceedings Your requests are denied. Your Honor, I, I And I'm going to instruct the jury that. at this point to I disregard and not consider any of... What has just happened since you walked in, it should not be held against Mr. Brooks in any way. Um, these are legal issues that this court may or may not need to address, but they do not bear in any way on ultimately the issues that these that you as jurors will have to decide. And I'm instructing you uh, um, to disregard uh, what you have just heard and seen. Your Honor, it's a, With rush, that, to, it's a rush to judgment. Mr. Brooks. Because... Your Honor, I just showed your oath that you swore to. Your oath. You swore, you Mr. Brooks, this, Honor. please call your next witness. You you took these oath of offices. Hey, three Robert. Of Honor, three of them. The, Graham. That's, that's a good idea. You know, that's a good one. Yeah. Decided to be a that would be another one. This, another T-shirt. In, in these type of matters, Your Honor, I, I respect it to the fullest, but also it you, you have to uphold these oaths. All right, I'm going to have to excuse Ryan. the jury since Mr. Brooks uh, is not to, calling his witness. You have we'll to, hopefully you have bring to, you back out shortly. You have to. Right. Honor these 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 oath of offices. You have to, as a public servant, Your Honor. I, I respect you being a public servant. We don't care. We don't care, Darrell. We don't care. He throws that word respect around way too much, which just shows you he he doesn't know really what it is and what it's all about. I do. I love that, Amanda. Nine oh six eleven grounds FM Prison Radio, where subject matter jurisdiction does not need to be proven. <laughs> do you want me to do it? I will do it. I'll start working on it today. <laughs> I'm serious. He's the only oaf in the room. <laughs> Illinois versus Ellen. Yes, Illinois versus Ellen has to be brought brought to uh, our attention. <laughs> do it. <laughs> 
she is exhausted. She, can you, oh, bless her heart. How does she do it? How does she do it? I, what, you know what? You don't have to like her personally, but the fact that she put up with this, you got to give her cred. She, oh, bless her heart. And this is not to take a shot at you in any way, but these, these Mr. issues Brooks, that I have, stop. Please they stop. need to be addressed. They need I'm to be. I'm excusing the jury. Can you please stop? Your Honor, this is a rest of judgment. This is clear. This is a clear bias. Mr. Brooks, you are to stop. Clear talking. bias. Are you asking me? I'm advising you or you will forfeit your right to be present at this so court for the contempt. questioning of your first witness. Because so you're holding me in contempt. I'm not holding you in contempt. Then how can you remove me from uh, the courtroom when I haven't given consent? Mr. Brooks, I'm advising you at this moment to call your next witness or you will forfeit the right to call these witnesses. You can't, you can't uh, take Under 906-11, right. you, you are cannot, refusing you cannot, to you call cannot, a witness. I didn't refuse anything, Your Honor. You can't, you can't deny me my Sixth Amendment right, which is Mr. to Brooks, call Mr. Brooks, you want to be present in this is courtroom subpoena witnesses. while you question your first witness. Because it is now 844, and 844. you've consistently talked in front of the jury who is no longer in this courtroom on issues that you have been That's advised gracious. and are fully aware are not relevant to their determination despite what you this, believe the law didn't have anything is. To do with the Subject jury, matter jurist, no, you, that's what, that is what you referenced in front of the jury. Hi, Christine. Yeah, Lisa, he thinks he is important. It's his, what I called his imaginary superiority. And then you reference my subject matter raise. jurisdiction, as you know, is not as something the state has to be. The state it must prove. Be it has to be. And you are it frankly confusing civil show jurisdiction law, in federal cases law, with law. criminal court jurisdiction in the state of Wisconsin. We don't have criminal. That we has don't been made have, abundantly We don't have subject matter jurisdiction or personal jurisdiction. Mr. Brooks. Or personnel jurisdiction. You don't. Carrie you have proven. You have not. I excuse the jury. I'll give you the opportunity to raise whatever issue it was, but you need to do it now or we're moving forward. That's what I want to do. That's what so, I was attempting to do. And if you interrupt me one more time, you're going to go do it from the other courtroom. And if you interrupt me one more time, I'm going to come over there and smack you. <laughs> Just kidding. I didn't say that out loud. Because so you're, you're being dis- All right. I'm, he can go to the other courtroom and we will address these issues because are you, you are not too? being respectful. You are disruptive. You are interrupting. Mm-mm-mm. mm mm Darrell, he does have a Perry Mason complex. And yes, Christine, he's delusional. Why can't we get enough of it, you guys? Oh, my goodness gracious, alive. Hi, everyone. How are we? Hello. Good morning. It's about 11.48 my time. So it's not as early as I did the other day, but still gives a chance for people that are not in the United States, a chance to come in and get on the live with us. I was looking through some paperwork. Hey, David. And I brought up, I found this, I found his old, Darrell's old handwritten dispute of his appeal or whatever. And I thought, let's, let's bring it up and and I'm going to read it here for you guys and talk, we could talk about it. I'm going to screen share this really quick. Everyone can see it okay? I believe you can. I'll scroll down because it's going to be hard for us to um, ta- put it put an F in the chat if you guys have, have already looked at this and read, it, read through it. I know a lot of you um, true crime junkies have already... Y- y'all are like 10 steps ahead of me every time. Blows me away. And I'm moving a little slow this morning because I wanted to give people time to come in. So let's let's start reading this. So as you can see, <laughs> he started his little handwritten thing. A- and looking all the way down on it, it does look like it's him. <laughs> it's on behalf of him. It was filed by his other persona who we call Scrappy-Doo, um, alleged defendant. So I'm hoping I can read this. I don't know. This might be a bad idea, me even bringing this up. (coughs) Excuse me. All right, let's see. Alleged defendant, jurisdictional challenge, and mandatory judicial, judicial, I always have a hard time with that word, judicial notice by affidavit, uh, comes now, 
he probably just copied this off of something else. Uh, Affiant Darrell, Darrell Edward Brooks Jr., one of the people of Wisconsin State, served jurisdiction de jour in the court of record for judicial review, hereby gives judicial challenge and mandatory judicial, judicial notice and waives no rights at any time for the record to stand corrected so that all public officials and private actors may provide due care. So he says, I, Darrell Brooks, admit that I am Darrell Brooks. <laughs> That's the, my favorite part right there. Okay. Alleged defendant challenged the subject matter jurisdiction of this court and withdraw all pleas and pleadings entered for this and all related cases and or litigation on grounds of the following. Okay. <laughs> Guess what the first one is? <laughs> Subject matter jurisdiction. Okay, subject matter jurisdiction has not been proven on the record and must be proven by the prosecutor in this or any other related case. And the court is of want of subject matter jurisdiction. The alleged defendant, Darrell E. Brooks Jr., has affirmed on record that. And then he's got these little... Well, okay, first of all, she did address it. She put it in writing. She handed it to him and he tore it up. We just did this recently on a, on a live. Okay, so he says, A... No competent witness nor a notarized affidavit demonstrating damage, injury, nor harm exist on record. Nor harm? You you wanna you wanna back up on that one, Darrell? <laughs> no injury, really? Um, and the plaintiff is fictitious and the alleged defendant is being placed under duress and coercion as the prosecution has failed to prosecute and substantiate the plaintiff's alleged claims. Judges and magistrates in this and related cases all re represent the plaintiff. I guess this is where she referred to that one of his appeals was that he, the state of Wisconsin didn't show up for to testify. Okay. B. No crime under an applicable enacted law has been committed, nor is there a statutory or common law basis for a remedy of the alleged injury, as no applicable applicable criminal code exists, nor criminal laws, just mere inapplicable penal codes, an array of offenses. Darrell E. Books Jr. is not a United States citizen. Oh, my word. Oh. This just makes you sick to your stomach. We're all going to need to take a Tums after this one. Oh, okay. The complaint, if one exists, is not verified by the plaintiff, nor is the complaint notarized. The witness for the fictitious plaintiff are executive branch officers, executive branch officers practicing, I don't even know that word, and, and who admitted to unlawfully making a judicial judiciary to determination outside of their delegated authority against sworn oath. Oath. He spelled it. Well, he's, it looks like he might have spelled it right, but it looks like it's O-O-T-H. But, you know, we know he pronounces it O-A-F-F. -F, oath. Done under color of law. Okay. So let me pause for a moment. Check in with my chat. Nothing. Y'all got nothing for me here? You just listening? All right. Well, that's fine. I don't mind. I'm going to keep reading. All right. Let's see. The plaintiff is fictitious and does not exist, nor is a man or woman in which whom could delegate authority and confer power of attorney for any other man or woman to act on its behalf, nor can it give testimony, affirm, nor deny the facts of this litigation. And all whom are representatives for the plaintiff are fraudulently doing so included the plaintiff's witnesses with threats of arrest. No contract between the parties exists compelling the performance or subjecting the alleged defendant to obligation, codes, nor the rules of the fictitious plaintiff, nor can the attorney witnesses for the plaintiff testify at trial. The alleged defendant has requested and demanded that the nature and causes of this action be given to him as well as the 1099s for his action and verification of 1099s, huh? Of the identity of the alleged defendant and plaintiff. And the prosecution has failed to provide these required documents, ultimately leaving the defense pre prejudiced. So he's got somebody, like we've always said, he's got somebody in jail telling him how to do all this, write all this stuff and 
He copied it out of a book. Okay, I'll probably keep in jail. All right, mandatory judicial judicial notice. Please take mandatory ju judicial. I hate that I can't say that word. I just have I struggle with it every time. I apologize. Okay. Administrative notice of the following. If on being unable or unwilling to admit the contract or other obligation into evidence, the prosecutor refuses to withdraw the claim and the judge magistrate refuses to dismiss the case, they will be pro proceeding without subject matter jurisdiction. With no subject matter jurisdiction, they have no official or ju judicial immunity. The prosecution has failed to pr prosecute and his this action must be dismissed. The courts have held that, one, when a judge knows that he lacks jurisdiction or acts in the force of clearly valid statutes expressly depriving him of jurisdiction. Judicial immunity is lost. And then he states a few court cases here. And then it says, two, a judge must be acting within his jurisdiction as to subject matter and person to be entitled to immunity from civil action for his acts. Uh, three, when a judicial officer acts entirely without jurisdiction or without compliance with jurisdiction requisites, he may be held. Oh, that looks like it says, will. I don't know what that word is. Something liable for abuse of process, even though his acts involved and in decision made in good faith that he had jurisdiction. You guys see how small his handwriting is? No judicial process, whatever form it may assume, can have any lawful authority outside of the limits of the jurisdiction of the court or judge by whom it is issued. And an attempt to enforce it beyond these boundaries is nothing less than lawless violence. Okay, you want to throw out some violence? Really? Really? You're going to tell me the court's being violent? Oh. Oh, no, he did not. I got to find where I was because I went off on the whole violence thing. Let's see. We're, okay. We judges have no more right to decline the exercise of jurisdiction, which is given than to use. Oh, I don't know that word that which is not given the one or the other would be treason to the Constitution. So he's stating I'm a sovereign citizen. None of this applies to me. But here, let me give you all these things, all these court cases. Um, subject matter jurisdiction cannot be waived by parties, conferred by, by consent, or ignored by the court. That's where he's going. Uh, subject matter jurisdiction may not be waived, and courts may cause the issue subspante. Uh, I don't know. It's legal terminology. Lack of subject matter jurisdiction is the defense that is never waived. Subject matter jurisdiction can never be waived and can be raised at any time, even after trial. Well, he certainly what he certainly raised it throughout the trial, did he not? He kept it going. He's saying judgment of court <clears throat> lacking jurisdiction is void. These proceedings by the prosecution have been a conspiracy to fraudulently fraudulently conceal the truth, nature, and cause of the accusations. Wherefore, if any party to this case does not agree to the claims made in this jurisdi jurisdictional challenge, please rebuttal point by point as a man or woman under oath or affirmation under penalty or perjury, under penalty of perjury, and give constitutional and or lawful laws, lawful laws on why I as a I, as a man, do not have the rights asserted in this jurisdictional challenge within three business days. If you fail to respond as a man or woman under penalty or perjury, you agree by acquiescence. I can't say that word. Acquiescence. I can't say that word. I apologize. I did graduate from high school, you guys. Um, to the claims made in the jurisdictional challenge, and you agree to dismiss this action with prejudice. Okay, so I hereby declare, verify, and state, pursuant to the penalties of perjury under the laws of the American nation, that I, that all the above and foregoing representations are true and correct to the best of my knowledge, information, and belief. And that was done in October. I did that on October 19th. And it was 
accepted into the court, as you'll see right up here on the 19th. And then below there, it says, it talks, I don't know why this is on there. I don't know if that's a mistake or not, but this was, this talks about how they took the jury to the garage to look at the vehicle. So I don't know why he thinks, I don't know why that's attached. Maybe that was an error, but yeah, he's acting on behalf of Terrell eBooks. Um, unbelievable. Well, that is all I wanted to, to read to you guys. I know that's short and sweet, but I just wanted to get it out there and let you guys see it if you hadn't seen it before. I'm sure you have. All oh, you guys are such sleuths. You go down all those rabbit holes finding this stuff on him. I just dropped a video today on Leticia Stouch. I've got another one coming out at 4 o'clock on Darrell. Some of the stuff I'm re-uploading um, from my previous content because I had to put some commentary on it. D says, who paid the notary public to certify these forms? Probably his mama. You're right, Phobe. He, his mother calls him Daryl. I noticed that too early on. Mr. Brooks so has nothing to do with I this said case. She me a suit. I have no idea what you're talking about. So. I, I got the paperwork right here. All right, I'm going to excuse the jury right about. now given this disruption. <laughs> Well, hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Scrappy Doo Brooks fan club. <laughs> or maybe it's not a fan club. I, I don't want to say the other word, though. <laughs> I, I uh, was going through all my videos that I'm trying to re-evaluate, and this part came up. And this is probably one of my favorite parts in the whole trial because I just found it to be hilarious. So let's take a look. Uh, sir, I'm not going to address any preliminary matters at this point. I've already addressed uh, a number of things yesterday. The jury is to be brought out. You know, there, there were some things that needed to be discussed about the paperwork from yesterday. Um, we'll take that up on a break. You can look over it. You can make a note and pass it to I've my already, I've clerk. I've already looked over it, Your Honor, with all respect. I think there's... <laughs> Don't you guys hate when he starts out with that every time? Your Honor, with all due respect... Mr. Brooks, I'm not going to deal with it right now. Indeed. It's paperwork. I just wanted it notated that you left it and now it's being provided not, to you talking, again. I'm not referring to that paperwork. I'm not right. dealing with the paperwork from the clerk of court's office either. I am not the custodian. We're going to bring the jury out. Okay, but she should, Mr. She Brooks, should know that she's trying Mr. to Brooks, get me I, to pay. Stop. She's I am not addressing it. it. It has to be addressed. All right, I'm going to take a quick break and make sure the jury is ready. And if we'll I, don't, off the if bench. I don't address it now. <laughs> he just keeps on talking while he's muted. <laughs> he, it's just, it's like a child. It's like, uh, mommy, 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 mommy. <laughs> Even when the parent says no or stop or whatever, he still keeps going. Watch how he looks at the camera. Here it comes. Evil. There it is. Y'all got me on camera? Y'all watching me? Because you know. This is all part of my plea. This is all part of my master plan to file an appeal. All right, thank you. The jury can come on out. Is civil matter? No. And he's and he starts I was back. Told to pay for something under a civil statute. Mr. Statute. Brooks, I am not the custodian. Bring it up with the clerk of court. How I'm not can I addressing bring it, up it. With the clerk of court. She, how, how am I supposed to do that? So that makes me wonder is what's being if it's a Mr. Civil Brooks, case. the jury's coming out. I'm not going to address your request. Some people will say all this is because she coddled him too much in the beginning. But all she was doing was trying to make sure he had a fair trial so that there could be no appeal. Ask for open civil, records. That's, civil, I'm not the custodian of the records, sir. Sued? My sister trust is being sued. <laughs> civil 
believe this is a matter. Mr. Brooks, this is an irrelevant matter that you're attempting to bring up in the presence of the jury. The record should reflect these interruptions. I was not. I was trying to bring it up before the jury came out, Your Honor. And I told you I wasn't going to address it. Please. Okay, so it's a civil matter. Who's being sued? My sister trusts because how can I be? Mr. Brooks, you're talking about an irrelevant matter between you and the clerk of court. It wasn't irrelevant when I got the paperwork from the clerk of courts. I was simply trying to address it. Mr. Brooks, I'm not going to address it. The jury will disregard these irrelevant comments. This is a civil matter. We haven't addressed subject matter. All right, thank you. Everyone, please be seated. The jury will disregard the statements Mr. Brooks is making about subject matter jurisdiction there. Okay, so the civil paperwork didn't do enough. So now let's jump back to the subject matter jurisdiction. Our misstatement of the law. Yes. No, All right, and just like this is a civil case. Mr. Brooks, the jury's here. Please like show respect and decorum. According to this um, document, this is a Mr. civil Brooks, case. Mr. Brooks, please stop. Which means someone is being sued. Civil is a suit. Mr. Brooks, <laughs> you're talking about an irrelevant matter. I'm starting the trial. Of course, right here, this says it's a civil matter. Mr. Brooks so has nothing to do with My this case. My stress is being sued. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. So I, I got the paperwork right here. All right, I'm going to excuse the jury right about. now, given this disruption. I'll rise for the jury. Civil is a sue. I'm being sued. Be Civil is a sue. <laughs> That's why I tried to properly address it before we even went on the record. Mr. Brooks, stop. I'm not going to. This is. You are. Not I being respectful to this proceeding or to this respect, jury. No, it's not with all due respect. Stating respect, that doesn't make it respectful. I was this paperwork by you, Mr. Brooks. Monica Pass. Stop talking till the jury court. is out. Okay, Thank you. So why can we address this before they came out? I'm that not going time, to address it. That bottom was the line. Time to address it though. It has nothing to do with this court. We're supposed to do all the addresses before the jury comes out before we start the matter. This is part of him not understanding the whole legal process and the whole trial process at how this has nothing to do <laughs> with this this case it is a separate case please be seated i was trying to simply address paperwork that was given to me by you your honor that states mr that brooks this, it states that you have interrupted me matter. repeatedly you are on the verge of being removed to that courtroom I don't want to on, do that. What, I want you to stay here. But you law, keep Honor. interrupting me and bringing up irrelevant matters. I told you yesterday as a courtesy that was provided to you so that you would frankly not complain that you didn't get it as quickly as possible. Okay? I am not the custodian of the records. If you have an issue with what was provided to you, how it was provided to you, then take it up with the clerk of she court. But from you. now on, I am not going to be the messenger and give you documents that you request to the custodian of the records. This is the this is right here is where she learned, okay, I got to stop doing extra things for him because he's just turning it around on me and making it worse. From the custodian of the records, they will simply have to be delivered to you at the jail. But that is in response to your discussion or whatever we want to call it this morning. I'm not taking it up. Yes, All right. Is. It is irrelevant. It, it needed to be noted for the record. It doesn't need it, to be <laughs> noted, sir. All right. The jury's <laughs> coming back out. And I'm going court. to warn you, if you bring this up again, I will pause and I will remove you to the next courtroom for so he thinks because she handed it to him in this courtroom that it applies to the, this court case. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You know what? We will never be able to understand the mind of Daryl Brooks. And that's just the way it is. For being disrespectful, for being interruptive, for being disruptive, and for bringing up irrelevant matters in front of this jury. You will forfeit your right to be present for the direct examination of this witness. I object to did that, you Your hear Honor. what I said, no, sir? No, I did not. I, I object to that, Your Honor. Well, you I object to that. Did you hear what I said? No, I did not, but I object to that. You can and object, and your you objection is noted, but if you interrupt record, when this jury comes the out, record, they will go. I will, rem I will have them taken out again, and you will be removed to the next for courtroom. The, you can't. What is the legal basis for that ruling, Your Honor? Illinois versus Allen, sir, and all of the and, other cases that I've cited previously. Anything, I'll make the appropriate record. Stop interrupting me. The jury's coming out. We're continuing with this trial despite your repeated efforts to disrupt. That's yesterday, sit down. Record. Yesterday sit alone, down. sir, 17 interruptions, not including the opportunity that I gave you where you spent 50 minutes, okay, discussing what were primarily either irrelevant or baseless accusations and requests not based in law or fact. 
I was abundantly patient with you yesterday. And you still have to and, verify by proof any of what and I said. None of that is required, sir. Because and it is. You can't verify. Your belief proof. that Where's that's the, the law the doesn't make it so, Mr. Brooks. That is my favorite line that she ever said. Your belief does not make it true. Your belief that these are legitimate legal positions they doesn't are. change the law and doesn't make it so. It, it, it's so again, relevant because you didn't want to I'm going it. to step off and give Mr. Brooks five minutes to cool off. And I'm when not, that I, happens, I don't I'm bringing cool the jury I'm not, I'm out not angry at and all. then we will. I don't need to cool off. I've done my job. I've upset you enough. I just wanted Continue. to, I don't. Oh, my favorite part when he's on mute. Still going. So part of me thinks, okay, so everybody says, oh, he was doing this to delay and stall and all that. I, You know what? I, I honestly think that he wasn't doing this stuff on purpose. This is the way he is. He is, he is this way. And the, a lot of people say it's because he wasn't on his meds. But can you imagine what he was like when he was a child, if he's like this now? Oh, my word. Well, I want to thank you guys for watching this little clip with me. I hope you enjoyed it. More to come. I've got plenty of stuff on Darrell, so don't go anywhere, guys. Y'all have a blessed day. Hi, everyone. This is Carrie, and welcome to Dimwit Criminals. I thought today would be a great day to look at some clips, go over some past stuff, and just kind of put some pieces together on this. Do you guys remember the time that Darrell came into court one morning and he says, you know, before we get started, Judge, I just want to say I apologize for my, apologize to you and the court for my previous actions. Uh, I wasn't raised that way. It just goes on and on. I've got the clip here somewhere. I should find it. Let me see if I can find it. Indeed. So it's on day six. Um, I just want to state this for the record. He came in, he started out with a bang. Remember when they had to get really forceful with him, like the first couple of days? So then he comes in and every day was a new day to him. It was like the last day didn't happen. Well, on day six, he comes in and I remember this specifically because I said, you know what? We got to do a video on this. Here's day six of what he says before they get started. You know how they normally do their morning things where they, before the jury comes in, they catch up on a few things. This is part of that. Very briefly, um, I just want to state this for the record that um i would like to issue the the court an apology for me um in regards to my actions last week during the trial um i just want the court to understand it's it's, it's very emotional uh right now not not only for Aww. just the whole situation of the trial right uh, the families here that have to go through right you know everything that's going to be involved with the trial but also my family as well and myself is it, is very very emotional and but he's such a good person my actions i should uh carry myself uh with with uh better respect than that i wasn't raised that way mm -hmm. and um i owe you your honor in the court an apology and, and okay. i want to stand up as a man and and, and tell the whole court and you standing up as a I man apologize to the bailiffs that i apologize for my actions mm -hmm. um like i said that's not how i was raised i come from a christian background okay my mother did not raise me that way she did uh -huh. not raise me you know to act out uh out of frustration and irritation and, and, and anger and i just wanted everybody to know that i apologize for my actions and um I'm going to try my best to um, whatever happens to conduct myself um, with respect and with respect to the court. Well, we appreciate and that. I just wanted y'all to know that uh, well, the prosecution, judge, bailiffs, okay. uh, clerks, reporters, everybody, the audience, everybody here. Okay. I just wanted y'all to know that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Brooks. Thank you you can sit down Brooks. now. I do appreciate that. Um, Understandably so, this is an emotional experience, I think, for everyone involved. I appreciate that you, upon reflection, have realized that courtesy and decorum are an important part of a court proceeding. Well, here she kind of gives him a little bit too much credit. But I think she was trying to like, okay, let's start fresh, Darrell. 
let's clear the slate because yeah we started off with a bang emotions were high let's settle down we got a long way to go in this court process because you know this was only day six and let's just start anew a lot of kumbaya moments right here but um, i do appreciate everything that you've said and i know we have detective casey who will bring up momentarily for your cross-examination and that was the key word detective casey his favorite one in waukesha <laughs> all righty okay so this is where this is the day that he's calling his witnesses and remember he said he wasn't going to tell them what order or anything because he wanted he didn't want them to have one up on him because he felt like he was being treated unfairly because they knew more about his witnesses than he did it was not his fault that they knew more about his witnesses than he did he can't help it if he can't open up the files and study at night and learn about this stuff he prefers to do it right there while they're on the stand so that everybody can wait on him while he looks at all the paperwork and the witness statements. Anyway, he comes in on day 15 and he wants the things the way he wants things. Oh, Darrell. Don't call her right now. You will forfeit your right to call her. Is that lawful? I told you what I believe my authority is. Okay, you, you told don't me want to you, recognize it, that's you fine. You want to object and note it? That's you fine. Your authority. Your I'm not, I'm not debating your authority. I'm not. I'll have the jury brought back in. And you should... <laughs> Still arrest the judgment, Your Honor. You can't. I shouldn't be. I shouldn't be forced to call people in the order that I'm being told to when these are my witnesses. My you, would, you did not. I had one. Someone commented previously, you know who you are. And they said, what is on the ceiling? <laughs> I thought that was so funny. Not want to provide us with the order, and I respected but, that, Mr. Brooks. I, but I said that, and so the then I then I asked Your you Honor, to put him in respect, blocks. With our respect, this is not about you. It's not about the state. It's about the witnesses. It's about what's fair. It's about what's fair. No, frankly, sir, it's about you trying to control what's happening in this court. How? How? We'll oh already be ready, Mr. Brooks. That was I the whole aim of that, and I would have had oh, aim of that. Later. You didn't want to answer that question. There was no question. I, to, it was no question to answer. Uh, I did. I true. did what you asked me to do, Your Honor. You no, said you yes. You did Mr. to do Brooks, their. Here's the deal. To do the their jury's cross. coming out, and I'm I'm going to stand my ground on this. When the jury comes back out, I'm releasing her from the subpoena. You can't do that. For law, your lack of lawful law. He's talking about um, Erica, and you know that's his. You know <clears throat> that's his button. You talk about Erica, you get her, you get her name involved in something, and he just starts going off. So that's that's what when she's saying her, that's what she means. Where's the lawful law? I have the right to you witnesses. You have to cooperate with this process, But I sir. also have the the Sixth Amendment well, right. We have a witness available for you to call. I can require it's you to call It's not the witness that right should have been called at this time or in order. This game with you, sir. It's not no game. That's it what was, you don't seem to understand. To I believe that fully. I don't care what you believe fully. All right. It's not a game. We. I don't take I this as a game. You. That's what, that's what nobody, you that's what nobody, you don't got to explain nothing to me. Nothing about this is a joke. I never That's what y'all don't understand. But there's and it's unfair. It's unfair and it's disrespectful to me that you think I would come in here purposely and treat this like a joke or a game. I never said it was a what joke. What type? What type? What type of? What type of statement is that? Ooh. Your life is not on the line. <gasps> Mine is. And you think that I, I think this is funny? I don't think it's funny whatsoever. So, I so I think, Your Honor, with all due respect, I think you so should show we're some take respect. A five minute break. And when we come back, the jury's coming out, and you need to call your next witness. Thank you. We are in recess. Nah, you, you're not rushing me to judgment. I don't care what you're talking about. Bip, 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 bip. Ooh. Didn't take him long to take that apology and throw it in the garbage, did it? Later in the day, um, and I do have this, have cuts of this, and we will be going over this, but we're going to skip past his cross with the witnesses. And we're going to jump straight to uh, this was, I believe this was like at some point towards the end of the day. As you'll see, he's taken the jacket off. He's already been taken out of court one time, put in the other room, brought back in. All right.
church. How are you even a judge? All right, you may step down, ma'am. Thank you. How are you even a judge? <clears throat> Come on, man. This must be all about the Sessy Q Trust, right? That you want to be the trust. beneficiary of? I am going to give the jury their closing instruction. Uh, we are done with testimony for today. Oh, the jury's still in the room. The discussion of the case until all decide. the evidence is presented. And I have instructed you on the law. Do not discuss this case among yourselves or with anyone else. It also extends to all forms of electronic communications. Do not use any electronic device. Watch his face, you guys. Watch him right here. As a juror. If you come in contact with the parties, lawyers, interpreters, or witnesses, do not speak with them. He's steaming. Look, look at that. Tell the jury the truth. You got no integrity whatsoever. None. None. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. I would like an update on whether. Uh, Mr. Brooks filled out a subpoena for Don Woods and provided that to the state. Has that been done? His mother. No, we haven't received anything, Your Subpoena Honor, for his mother to come testify. Obviously, she can appear here voluntarily if uh, Mr. Brooks <coughs> wants to arrange that. I don't believe a subpoena is necessary. Our position would be, Your Honor, that we will not be responsible in any fashion for producing Ms. Woods. Get them some water. Mr. Brooks talks to her on a daily basis. If he wants her here, he can produce her on Monday. Yeah, they ain't got to worry about that. So I just wanted to know, because I know a subpoena form was filled out. He's fixing to get so, thug on us. I want her to be here. She's going to be here. I agree with so the just, state that. just know that. Um, she could certainly appear. It ain't even got to be no arrangement. All I got to say is come. She going to come. <laughs> That simple. Mr. Brooks, do you intend to call her as a witness? Because I'm directing yeah, you to said, have her here we said at all 9 that, We said all that at the beginning, man. Like, I don't even want to be in here that much longer. Just do what you got to do so I can get up out of here. I'm tired of being in the courtroom that has no integrity whatsoever. How can you even call yourself Mr. a judge? Brooks, I need to make a record of some I need things. to make a record, too. You don't when am to I going to get the chance to do that? All right, I need to make a record. He's being removed to the other courtroom. He is yelling at me. He's not going to let me make a statement or make the record that I need to make. I'm finna, I'm finna he hasn't anyway, sat so down we'll do for you the better part of two hours. All you, want. you can hold me in contempt all you want. I'm not holding all you, you in contempt. If it's criminal or civil, so I can hit right. you with you. I need to clear the courtroom because you know I do need I'm to make. I'm you know it's coming. I need him to go uh, to the other civil, courtroom because I do need to put some things on the civil, record. The record should Where's reflect the contract between you that and I? Mr. Brooks is criminal, yelling at me. What is the crime? He's, he is what is the crime, the really? And what he is, is the, I will make the record when we get back. I will step off, but Mr. Brooks, you're being taken no, to the next no Mr. Brooks. Don't try to address me Thank like you. that, like we cool. You don't have no integrity. Why we cool? You call yourself a judge, making tacky agreements, being biased, Tacket. judicial misconduct, trying to steal somebody's system. It seems to me that, it seems to me that all y'all been wanting to do It's gang up. <laughs> Bias, be prejudiced. Bias. And gang up. Four against one. Four against one. Don Woods did not appear in the court the following Monday. Brooks avoided the topic when asked about his additional witness by ranting on another topic. Yep, he said, if I want her to come, she going to come. All I got to do is tell her. Uh, and then the speculation was, why did mommy not come to court? Why didn't mommy come to court? Mommy, um, I'm thinking that, I was thinking, number one, she's, she's embarrassed. Number two, she's scared of what people are going to say to her in person in the courtroom. Like, as far as, maybe number three, she was scared to even face these people that were sitting in the courtroom. The people who... The victims' families, the vi well, literal victims that were sitting in the courtroom. Um, 
I don't think it had anything to do with the fact that she was like, nope, you've done this crime and you're going to pay for this crime, Darrell or Daryl or whatever she calls him. Uh, I don't think it had anything to do with that. It was all about her and not about him. And it just kind of goes by, goes to show you maybe this is why this might be unpopular, but, and I've, I've said differently in past streams, but I've changed my mind many times over this, but I just think that maybe if she was the type of mom that would come and sit behind her son and support him, regardless of what's gone on, because, you know, most mothers would come and sit behind their child, even though their child may have done some really horrible things, they're still that child's mother, they would have come, or that person's mother, they still would have come and sat behind them in support to show that they had at least one person that would support them in the courtroom. Darrell didn't have anybody supporting him in the courtroom. Nobody. I mean, there was a couple of people that were like trying to get on the news and stuff that would come, but it literally, no family members. Does Isn't that telling? Doesn't that say something? Totally says something to me. Wow. So... That was a sn snippet that I wanted to just kind of bring to your attention because I thought it was so funny that one day he's one way and another day he's another way. The many faces of Darrell Brooks. So thank you all for watching and we have a lot more to come. A lot more clips that I have for commentary. You guys all have a blessed day and we'll talk to you soon. Hello, everyone. I just wanted to come on really quickly and let you guys know that some interesting news has occurred. Our favorite detective, Detective Tom Casey, with Waukesha Police Department, has retired. He did it earlier this week, or at least they posted it earlier this week. And, you know, I went through, I was like trying to find some, I, I want to find as much information about him as I could, right, to kind of do a little thing do a little bio on him well he apparently stays low-key I mean the only thing that I can find on him is the things that he's done that are big deals and I mean really big deal stuff like number one he was involved with the slender man case which if anyone doesn't remember that one that was the two little girls that um, tried to unalive their best friend and they said that slender man made them do it you remember that one little girl, she went away to the mental institution. I think she still might be in the mental institution, but I haven't followed that case. Um, what's going on with that lately? I know that they, I don't really know exactly where the girls are at right now. I, I, did, I believe one of them did get out. Okay. The one little girl that had the mental issues, the little blonde with the long hair, her name was Morgan Geyser. She was actually the one that Detective Casey was interviewing. So if you've ever watched, if you ever watched that interview, there's there's Detective Casey. He was actually featured on Good Morning America. Um, kind of wanted to go over what he had said. This is the little girl right here. He, this is the one that he interviewed. And this is a little girl that was hurt. And if you're not familiar with this case, this is the little girl he interviewed. Um, I think this one got out. I can't, re I just remember last year, wasn't it last year? There was some hubbub about that. Um, anyway, she's doing great now, this little girl. She's, she's fine. But it was a scary case. If you haven't ever watched the documentaries on it, I highly suggest you do so. Two of the, it looks like according to this information that I found here, It looks like they did some type of presentation on this, uh, Detective Casey and some others with the Waukesha Police Department for training with other police departments because it it seems to be something that's in lockdown that I can't get a piece of. So I, I talked to one of my friends in law enforcement one time and, you know, they're always training and learning from what others go through. So I would take it that that's where this is coming from. Um, it says here that Detective Casey is a detective with the Waukesha Police Department who specialized in death investigations. He worked at the police department, at the Waukesha Police Department. Well, it says 20 years, but I know it's more than that because this is older. 
where he investigated crimes ranging from financial crimes to homicides. Detective Casey holds a bachelor degree in criminal justice from the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee, and he was the lead investigator of the Slenderman case from the day it occurred throughout the judicial process. Uh, he was the first one that went over to the one that he interviewed, Morgan. He went to her mother's house to talk to her. Well, let's just go over what he says here, because this, this is really interesting. You guys probably remember that picture. And I'm not going to read this whole thing because this isn't about that case. Uh, I just wanted to read what De Detective Casey had said. Casey went to Geyser's home and spoke to her mother, Angie Geyser. He discovered that the two girls had a sleepover the night before with a third friend. Neither were at the home. And police fanned out across Waukesha an extensive search looking for the two missing 12-year-old girls. Casey said he thought they were in grave danger and that we may find these girls dead somewhere. So it was interesting he was part of that. And of course we all know him very well for the work done on the parade case. I did want to say, read this here to you guys on January 24th of 2012. So, yes, it's very, very old. But um, Sarah Millard with Pat Staff, she did uh, this little mock-up on him about how he was promoted from an officer to a detective. And there he is, a wee bit younger lad. When he was promoted, he was a 14-year veteran. And they described him as the closer because of his work closing cases as a police officer. Tom has persevered and has worked very hard to get where he is today and to put this detective badge on. He is going to wear this with pride, as everyone does here. Anything worth having is worth working for, and Tom has worked extremely hard for it. I really love that they call him the closer. I used to love that TV show. So, from our little humble channel here at Dimwit Criminals, we just would like to say, Detective Casey... Congratulations on your retirement. We hope that you are able to go out and enjoy your retirement, get some rest, um, go fishing, go spend time with your family. Enjoy your retirement. You've deserved it. And I think I speak on behalf of everyone here on my channel. We thank you for your services. All right, guys, that's it. I just wanted to share that with you really quickly. Y'all have a blessed day, and I will talk to you very soon. All righty. Are you guys ready? Did you get your coffee, wine, tea, whatever you're going to need to just settle back in for just, huh, what, half an hour maybe? We don't need to stay on here too, too long tonight. You guys, I had a snake out in front of my house this, this morning. It's too early for snakes. Well, you know what? Subject matter jurisdiction has still not been proven as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Objection. And all the objections printed around it here say. Leading, speculative, relevancy, tack it. You forgot tack it. <laughs> Durl. It was a dural snake. It was Charlotte. <laughs> it was just a little black snake, but I'm terrified of them. I am so scared of snakes. I've, I'm not scared of anything else, really. It, it, snakes, I can't do it. I just can't. That's my weakness. And, um, oh, my gosh. My brother-in-law works like five minutes from here, and he owns his business, so I made him come get it. <laughs> Because he knows how I am about him. That's, I, it's like I lose my stuff. I just really can't deal with it. They're, they terrify me. They remind me of Satan. I don't know how to explain it. I am, I'm speaking the truth, David. Yeah, they need to be misspelled for sure, Jackie. Amanda. I'm going to plead the fifth on that one. Both of them. Both of them. I can't. Gosh. 
You know, as many times as I've heard it, I wish I could say it the way you're writing it, Barbara. It did come all of a sudden. <laughs> Charlotte says the notification for this live came all of a sudden. Hi, JPC. Thank you. I'm glad you enjoy it. I'm hoping this video is going to crack you up because we, we all need a good laugh, right? It's the middle of the week. All right. I'm going to shut my trap and take this off and then let's play this video. Oh, here's a good one. Let's get this one like he, he gets mad over this one. Bubba called. Meet him in the shower at 2 p.m. Bring the soap. He doesn't even know where. <laughs> Around the uh, time of 4.49 p.m. on that afternoon of November 21, 21, where were you? I was outside uh, working around the yard. Around I agree, Melly. Yeah. It, it, I mean, it, he turned it into the, the, Bro the Darrell Brooks show. 4.49 p.m., what happened, sir? Objection. Leading a witness. Um, I heard some noise around the on the east side of my garage, and uh, I went to see what was going on. And I found the defendant uh, on the side of my garage. He was trespassing. Okay. Um, immediately, it Hi, it just seemed off because he was wearing a t-shirt. I, if I remember correctly, he was not wearing shoes. He was, it was very cold out. He was uh, sweating. His eyes were huge. And uh, he was just acting. He was, when he came out from the garage, he, he was asking if I could call him an Uber. Okay. The person that you're describing for us, sir, do you see him present in the courtroom here? Sitting over there with the mask on and in the suit. Okay, I'm gonna ask the defendant be the moron over there with the mask on. I'm not calling him a moron because he's got a mask on. I'm just saying he's a moron. Instructed to remove the mask. Mr. Brooks, and if he would look at the witness, please, Your Honor, with his head down, it's not to assist him. Right, Mr. Brooks, please uh, look up and look at the witness. Look at the witness, please. Thank you. Is that the man that you're describing that was in your backyard that you spoke to? Objection, yes. Lee. Thank you, sir. I don't have any other questions. All right, sir. Mr. Brooks, do you have any questions for this witness? Yes, I do. And I object to being called that name for the record. Um, <laughs> but I'm going to answer to it. Do you recall the description that you gave at that time? I do. Well, my best best of my knowledge was that uh, you were either black, Latino, who's you, or mix. Who's you? Well, you have to let him answer the question first before you interrupt him with another one. Go ahead with the description you provided that night. I said that the individual was either black, mixed, or Latino. So it would be fair to say you didn't know at the time. Yeah, this is the one, JPC. I was giving a general description. So it would be fair to say that you weren't sure. I was positive that I was positive it was you. Who is you? You. I'm looking at you. <laughs> Coffee cake. And how did you come to that conclusion, the, the you conclusion? <laughs> I'm looking at you. So it would be fair to say at that time, you had no name or knowledge of who uh, the person was in your backyard. Would that be fair to say? I had no idea who you were. And so how can you say who, the, how can you say you then if you had no idea? <laughs> it says, you remember Brooks telling Sue Opper? Oh, wait. He didn't think she was that bright. I would tell him, well, listen, I went to law school. You went to jail. <laughs> Which one of us is the brightest? Love it. I'm looking at you. You are the guy. And how did you come to that conclusion? 
uh, where you and I were standing in the same yard looking at each other. So, is it possible you saw something on the news? No, I had no idea who you were. Interesting. <laughs> and would it be fair to say that from those news reports you gained additional information that you didn't have that night? Actually, what I did is went into work the next morning and pulled up the police report on, on the internet, and there you were in a so, moonshot. And I'm like, that's the guy. So you got a further description from a mugshot? No, I didn't get a further description. At the time, I didn't care who you were when you were in my yard. I didn't know who you were, what you had done, where you had been, any of so, that stuff. So all, I'm, all, all I'm saying is you were trespassing my yard at that time, and that's all I can say. And, and what prompted you to have read the, or pull up the police report? Objection, Grounds. He, he said he brought it out here. Um, overruled, he may answer. I was curious of actually who you were and, and what, if you were the person that actually had done the atrocities that were on tel television that had done that. You keep referring to the you. You. <laughs> no, I'm looking into your eyes right now. You're the, the guy I'm talking about when I refer to you. And the record should reflect that uh, the witness used his right hand and index finger to point directly at uh, the defendant. Next question. You, you are guilty. So you just made reference to looking the you in the eyes, but you would need. What would you prefer I call you? You would need. Because you're not going by Daryl Gross. You would need me to step out of my shoes to tell my height and weight, right? Well, I'd have to also stand two feet from Hold on, hold on, please. Um. Mr. Brooks, you're directed under 90611 to ask a question and not argue with the witness. That, that Thank was you. A question. It was argumentative. Now, please rephrase your question, and then the witness is instructed to wait until a question is asked. And if there's any objection, then I rule on it first. Go ahead. Next question. It sound like he didn't want to argue. Last <laughs> comment, Mr. Brooks. You're not testifying right now. You'll have an opportunity if you cho choose to do that later. Please ask a question. You said you pulled up the uh, police report at work the next day, right? No, I pulled up your mugshot. Your mugshot. <laughs> you don't recall saying that you pulled up the police report specifically? I specifically wanted to pull up the picture of the person that had committed those atrocities to see if that was the person that had cut through my yard, which confirmed it was. <laughs> oh, that was good. You're right, JPC. SNL could not write a better script. Demand they cross-examine his witnesses. <sighs> I don't know if I can find that one. Hang on. Let me talk amongst yourselves and let me go in and see if I can find what I can find. Okay, hang on. Oh, can we can we do this one since we're having a good time tonight and there's a good bit of you guys on? How about we do something uh, fun and then I'll look for this other one, okay? Okay, so re y'all remember when I posted this and I said, say how many times, count how many times he says dishonor? Opening, there we go. <laughs> Let's count them together. Record to reflect, we are all back in this courtroom. Before the jury's brought out, can we address subject matter jurisdiction, Your Honor? Before Absolutely the jury's not. brought out? Absolutely not. Is that a tacit agreement that you don't have to answer those questions? He knows tacit jury, now. Your Honor? So are you going to act in dishonor? Mr. Brooks? Are you going to act I've in dishonor? I've already addressed your request. It hasn't been proven for the record, Your Honor. The Should jury be. is on its way. They're not out yet, though. But and they're on the way. You held me in contempt. I'm not you held addressing me in contempt these matters, before. sir. Have I, have I acted in dishonor, Your Honor? You held me in contempt 
without me being in dishonor? How, how have I dishonored the court? Have I acted in dishonor? Have I rose my voice or argued with your honor? Have I disrupted the courtroom in any you're way? you're back in this courtroom at your request. The jury is coming up. I've never should have Please been. Please be respectful of their time. I have. I have been. They weren't even the out before. of the proceedings. They weren't even out before when I was trying to address what needed to be Mr. addressed Brooks. before they came out. Have I? He could have just recorded this stuff on day one and then just replayed it every day. It's because it's the same stuff every day. All back in this courtroom. Before the jury's brought out, can we address the Oh, sorry. I went, I started over again. Before Absolutely the jury's not. brought out. Absolutely not. Hey, Mama Gemini. Is that a tacit agreement that you don't have to answer those questions as a public servant, Your Honor? So are you going to act in dishonor? Mr. Brooks. Are you going to act I've in dishonor? I've already addressed your requests. It hasn't been proven for the record, Your Honor. It the jury be. is on its way. They're not out yet, though. But they're on the way. You held me in contempt. I'm not you held addressing me in contempt these matters, before. sir. Have I, have I acted in dishonor, Your Honor? You held me in contempt without me being in dishonor. How, how have I dishonored the court? Have I acted in dishonor? Have I rose my voice or argued with Your Honor? Have I disrupted the court? Mr. Brooks, in any you're way? back in this courtroom at your request. The jury is coming up. I never should have been. Please be respectful of their time. I have, process, I have been. They weren't even the out before. of the proceedings. They weren't even out before when I was trying to address what needed to be addressed Brooks, before they came out. Have I, am I acting in dishonor? Am I acting in dishonor? So that's a tacit agreement that you don't. Jury, it's a tacit agreement that you don't have to answer questions as a public servant. Right? All right, the jury. No, no jury's out. out. Mr. Brooks, no jury's out. Door. I was trying to address Brooks, this before they, are they right came outside out. This door. I am not going to do this with you this morning. You either abide doing, by these rules am I acting and stay in quiet, am or I you acting will be in, in the other courtroom. Am I acting in dishonor? Yes, you are acting How? in dishonor. How? You are disobeying the direct order of this court to respect the decorum and the dignity of these proceedings. You are merely attempting to delay. I don't care what you think. That's not accurate. Mr. Brooks, I am having this jury out. And, and if you and say you're making, one word when that door opens, you're making a tacit agreement. Then you will forfeit your right to be present. So you're acting in dishonor, then, Your Honor. Hey, Bambi. The jury may come in. You're acting in dishonor by making a tacit agreement that you don't have to answer any questions as a public servant. You're not holding up to your oath to protect the Constitution. All right, the door is open and he's talking. Okay, so you're going to hold me in All contempt? Right. The jury cannot come in. Are you going to hold right. me in contempt? The, Mr. Brooks is going to be removed. We're in recess until that. How, am I, how am I acting in dishonor? Go ahead. <laughs> can can y'all hear me? We I love it when he's waving from over there, trying to get their attention, and they're just ignoring him. Yeah. First of all, at 925, I would uh, like the record to reflect that the prosecution was making uh disparity of remarks and uh, gestures in pursuance to what just happened. I don't appreciate it, and I think that that is very disrespectful. Here we go, that disrespectful word For again. For the record. And For the record. again, I'm trying to figure out how did I act in dishonor to be removed from the courtroom? How have I acted in dishonor? This is a whole nother... Your Honor. It has yet to be proven for the record. And upon your refusal, that would be looked at as dishonor. I'm not addressing it. The jury's coming out. So this is that a, a, a tacit agreement that you don't have to answer any questions as a public servant, Your Honor? Is this the day after you pronounced the word tacit? And has he already looked it up? And understands exactly what it means. Therefore, being that's dishonor. Are you going to honor your oath of office? Stand. I'm not addressing it. Further. Are you going to honor your oath of office? All right. Coffee cake. I was thinking about that the other day. I was like, we all talk about how poor judge and poor defense attorneys. What about the court reporters? Bless their hearts. 
I bet they got big Christmas bonuses. I mean, can you imagine? So I'll take that as a test. They agreement. probably didn't get Christmas bonuses because they work for the government. But I'm sure that um, Judge Durrell brought them a nice little gift at Christmas. But you're not going to honor your All oath right, of office. All right, I'm going to have to excuse the jury. I, I bet, Charlotte, that Barbara has also watched it at least 10 times. Mr. Hey, Brooks, Scott Belt Sr. That if you made any interruptions when they came out, you would be removed to the courtroom. That's what I'm doing right now. You're forfeiting your right to be present in this courtroom. Have I acted in dishonor, Your Honor? Mr. Brooks, I very expressly warned you. Have I acted in dishonor? You have disobeyed a direct order from this court. Have I acted in dishonor? You have disrupted these proceedings. Can you pledge that you will respect these proceedings and this jury by not interrupting? Have I acted in dishonor, Your Honor? I will ask you one more time. Can you pledge to be quiet, sir? Why should I why should I have to make a pledge, Your Honor? Have I acted in dishonor? Because under Illinois versus Allen, I believe you've already forfeited your right to be here. Removed to the neighboring courtroom. We will be in recess until that takes place. Your Honor, have Thank I, you. have I acted I'm on mute. I don't know why I cut that off. I didn't mean to. Steve, where did you hear that about the, um, see, something I'm learning about Steve is Steve does some in-depth research. He reads a lot. I know you do. Because it's damn cold up there where he is, and he doesn't go out much, right? Because it's so cold. Where did you hear it from? <laughs> I know that transcript. <laughs> yeah. I bet she did. I wonder if she sent him massages or something. Hand massages. <laughs> did they have to send one in the other courtroom when he was removed? Oh, that's a good question, but I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> Those, can you imagine? Oh, my gosh. I know, coffee cake. I was like that too. She has a boyfriend? Okay, here we go. Co Steve says, allegedly, Steve says, Don's boyfriends were the people giving him legal advice every night in his jail calls. Calls from jail. That's why every morning he was he has a written script to follow. All right. Somebody mentioned in an earlier live that they had seen something about jail calls. Now, I did something with a jail call. Uh, last week or earlier this week and it was the jail calls that were um, before he went into this trial D does somebody know where these other have they come out yet the ones from this trial because I haven't received anything court in the other Teresa says yes they did there's a court reporter in the other room the judge mentioned it once oh okay I didn't know I didn't realize that you can't get transcripts of his calls with Don because he was getting advice to represent himself with. Oh, I see what, like, so they're like, um, what do you call it? I know what you're saying. Oh, Barbara. <laughs> How much did she pay that guy to be a boyfriend? Thanks. Your Honor, have, Thank I, you. have I acted in dishonor? Um, this court has previously relied upon and 939.63 sub 1 sub b of the Wisconsin statutes. The 28th count of the information in this bill sub 3 sub f and 939.63 sub 1 sub b of recklessly engaged. That's one of my favorites. He did, Karen. He's just that person. He's got that personality. He's got the, that type of personality. Appeal isn't over. Before the parade incident. And those were the ones I played the other night. Somebody got mad because I played those and said it was the jail calls. It was jail calls, and I didn't have his mom in the um, thumbnail. I had Erica in the thumbnail. So they... I wasn't trying to say these were brand new or anything. Teresa's saying the same thing you are. What is that called when the they can't talk about, their, the attorney can't speak, privileged information or whatever? Attorney-client privilege. Thank you, Charlotte. 
<laughs> That's what I was thinking. And Karen, we were thinking the whole way through the trial. Does he not realize that this woman's going to be the one that's going to drop the axe down on him? And he doesn't understand what he's been doing. No, he. Oh, he understands what he's been doing. But for him, he doesn't feel like he's been dishonoring anybody because he feels like he's that important that he should be able to speak over everybody. Thank you. I love this music too, JPC. I think it's appropriate that I actually found one with music in it since you're on the live tonight, JPC. <laughs> Everybody wrote Tony Client Privilege. All right, hang on. I'm looking for another video. Y'all keep talking in the chat. I'll be right back with you. Because there was some I wanted to. I don't have the one that you want, Steve. I don't have that one ready. But this was always one of my favorites. Judge Sue Upper, Leslie Basie, and Zach Wichow all appearing for the state of Wisconsin. Sir, state your name for the record, please. Um, I'm here as a third party intervener in that matter, appearing <laughs> as a <laughs> He's dying. For my client. Uh, Iowa, 33 for degrees. In return for value, oh, good all the gracious, I couldn't do it. In this matter, and make my I looked out this weekend, Steve. For discharge of all obligations and charges connected with this case. I do not dispute any of the facts in the charging instruments. Also, Your Honor, I would like to make an offer for my appeal, if I may. The individual uh, known to this court to be uh, Darrell Brooks is appearing uh, in person in custody. I do not consent or identify by the, by the name that you stated earlier. I want Hi, the Nora. to reflect that, if I may. The record will reflect. Thank you. Mr. Brooks, I know there was an inmate communication form <laughs> to our filed I That's believe, hilarious. earlier this morning. We addressed the inmate communication form. I sent the boat. The, I have uh, a number of issues I need to address, so yes, we'll get to that. Hey, Cher. I believe that that has a, uh, that that's an important issue that should be taken up before we continue any further in the proceedings. I just want to make sure the state has a copy of what was forwarded first before we take that up. Respectfully, uh, would like the state for the record and would like the record to reflect that. Um, I believe that this is an issue that should be addressed at this point before we Sir, go any I'm further. Um, I'm going to call into court afraid today. No, I, no that, I just messed up my joke. I'm going to call in court scared today. I'm afraid I can't make it. But I'm preparing to do that. I didn't say I wouldn't do that. So give me a minute. I have some documentation that I'd like to provide to the parties as well. Yes, dated today because I just learned of the protocol that I would be on as of today. I was provided. I respectfully object. Um, yes, Judge. Your Honor, I would like an answer to that question, if I may. Because I have not consented to or agreed to accept any paperwork that... Sir, if they're provided to you, uh, it's so something I'm going to consider. You don't want to read making, it. You want to disregard it. That's your choice. Are you making a judicial determination that you don't have to answer that question I just asked you, Your Honor? So, my understanding... Um, just from the information uh, Mr. Brooks has provided, uh, which is part of the public rec record, is uh, he is requesting an adjournment of all proceedings uh, due to learning that he's on a COVID-19 protocol. I'm essentially on a protocol that doesn't allow me out of my cell until my results come back. Hmm. Sir, I just, have the, uh, like, uh, an attorney for the county me, here who will verify wanna, that none of that information has been you, provided to me due to HIPAA uh, to requirements. I'm arguing, so I'm not arguing I'll, with you, I'm sir. I'm going to let her get a word in edgewise. I'm not arguing with you either, but I was right in the middle of finishing what I was saying. So I need to stop you for a minute, Mr. Brooks, I, because... I don't consent to that, Your Honor, because... You don't have to consent, but here we go. Let me let me being cut off right when I'm trying to... All right, I'm just going to talk... She's like, you don't have to consent because it doesn't matter what you think. 
He perked up quickly. I don't understand when he said it was abuse by the prosecutor. It was in reference to a response from Opper. Yeah, he's fixing to jump back. Over him for a minute. I do not have any other information regarding uh, uh, the COVID-19 protocol, meaning anything specific about you, Mr. Brooks, other than what was put in the inmate communication, which reads, due to just learning I'm on COVID-19 protocol, I respectfully ask for all proceedings to be adjourned at this time, which is why I asked you if there was any other information you wanted to provide Dry sniffle. as I consider your request, because the jail has not provided me with any specific information regarding the reason you were placed on protocol, they cannot provide me with that information absent you giving them permission by signing an applicable authorization to do that. Without that, I have to rely upon you to provide that information that, to me is, if you so choose. That is incorrect because just yesterday <coughs> you were trying to obtain the witness list that was in my cell. You had no problem the, whatsoever. The J.A. come down here to have me verify that they can go in my cell and oh, search for that. that. So you I can't I consult with jail staff for them to tell you what is going on in my situation where they know that I've just been having a, um, a loss of taste, fatigue, and I have... It's like a child. Darrell. Karen, his mom calls him Darrell. Erica called him something else. She called him Jay, didn't she? <laughs> in the meantime, the jail administrator sits down in the back. <laughs> Teresa said COVID, COVID even took a hard no when it came to Darrell. Do you guys think that the prisoners got to watch his trial? I bet they did, huh? Some of them that had the privileges. Results of my test, and until then, I am on a protocol which restricts me that is very to my easy information to obtain. And I find it very hard that Your Honor cannot obtain that information but to communicate with jail staff when there's blah, a witness. Blah, 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 blah. We're talking about someone's health that can affect not just you, but anybody else, not just officers, but also inmates. We're talking about health and we're talking about safety that has a lot of merit. And, and frankly, Your Honor, I'm afraid. I'm fully vaccinated and I've, I've never had COVID. I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm, that was the last thing I was hoping I would be told today, Your Honor. So I'm, I'm afraid right now. I'm not feeling well. I don't hey, Tom. know what's going on with That's myself. the reason why I put in the sick call slip initially. Are you willing to discuss with me what tests were done? Again, I, I cannot obtain that information I don't, I'm on not my a, own. I'm not a nurse, Your Honor. I don't know the name of the test. I don't, like I said, I I've never had this let happen. Let me clarify that. That was, a bad, that was a pretty ambiguous question. You reported symptoms as, as that's what you're telling me, right? Correct. So, <clears throat> this is the good part. And before it starts, I want to just say one thing to you, Nora. Roll Tide, baby. And you're saying some tests were done? I mean, that it's obvious. I mean, why can't it be verified with, with the nurse? I have to verify it with you. The nurse will not provide me with this information. But the jail can because they control the movement. Here to talk about inmate movement just, at the I moment. What I'm asking you is, were you, do you believe you were tested for COVID? I obviously was tested for COVID. I, I would not be on the protocol if I was not. Do you know when the results of that test will be back? Uh, from my understanding, Friday. That's what I was told by the doctors. I would have to be at least on this protocol until the results come back, which were you, he said the earliest would be Friday. Were you offered a rapid test? They said they do not do the rapid test. Um, if one can be obtained, are you willing to submit to a rapid test? I'm, I'm not willing to submit to anything right now until we <laughs> take care of the issues that, that's at hand. I mean, I've already been placed on the protocol. <laughs> I'm, 
frankly, I'm a, very afraid right now because I, I don't know what's going on. I've, this is new to me. Like I said, I'm fully vaccinated, Your Honor. I've been fully vaccinated since 2021. So for this to just be sprung on me now to say this could possibly be a COVID thing. I've had people close to me that have passed away from COVID. I'm afraid as hell, Your Honor. That's the reason why I submitted as hell. the ICF for the adjournment. I was thinking at hey, least Kevin. until I can get the results at, at bare minimum. I don't think I'm asking something that's Sir, impossible for if your I can right? make arrangements to have a rapid test brought to you and administered, are you willing to submit to that test? Not at this time. Why not? Not at this time. Why not? Why can't I get the Why results not? for the test? I love I that. Took? But you're Why telling not? me you're scared? You're yes, fearful? Yes, I am. I but you am don't want to take a test that might I tell took, you today? I took the test that, that he, he gave me. If, and if you're telling felt, me that test result won't be available to you until at least Friday. At least Friday. That's what I was so told. Tomorrow. I was told that I would be so placed on after. this protocol. So, the results came back. The earliest that the results would be back would be Friday. Um, I am I'm asking you once again, if a rapid test can be obtained, are you willing to take a rapid test? How would that be obtained? And you said at this point, you're not willing to take a rapid test. Well, they said, they said this the is the test that they do when he was telling me, when he told me how the test, because I, like I said, there was a lieutenant and two all things right was going here. on. Because I want to delay as long as possible. Hey, Glenn. Glenn says his whole goal was to delay this or get it thrown out. Yeah. Yeah, I guess, you know, maybe during the trial, he got a little bit of maybe he got some extra perks or something and he was doing what he could to just keep it going as much as possible. And two, you know, he may have also been struggling to find people to come in and talk on his behalf because, you know, I didn't think about that, but maybe that was part of it. Maybe he wasn't sure who was going to come talk on his behalf. Right? Exactly. Exactly, Mama Gemini. <laughs> when he denied the rapid test, it was like, what? what? And then he didn't want there to see his results. Exactly. Carly <laughs> says, I'm not out of my cell, but yet here I am, out of my cell. Fatigue, French word, by the way. That was him. The, Charlotte, don't you see how fatigued he is? He's leaning over forward. He's trying to show where he can't even stand up on his own right now. Bless his heart. He needed his mommy. The county jail. Yeah, uh, that's what I'm thinking too, Amanda. Just going to that other place was, ugh. I'm so tired. Let me stand up. <laughs> oh, shoot. I just lost our spot. Crap. Hang on. I'm not, a, I'm not a nurse, Your Honor. I don't know the name of the test. I don't, like I said, I mean, I've never had this let happen. Let me clarify that. That was, a bad, that was a pretty ambiguous question. You reported symptoms. As, as that's what you're telling me, right? Correct. And you're saying some tests were done? I mean, that it's obvious. I mean, why can't it be verified with, with I the mean, nurse? I have to verify it with you. The nurse will not provide me with this information. But the jail can because they control the movement. Here to talk about I can't, inmate I can't movement just, at the I moment. What I'm asking you is, were you, do you believe you were tested for COVID? I obviously was tested for COVID. I, I would not be on the protocol if I was not. Do you know when the results of that test will be back? Uh, from my understanding, Friday. That's what I was told by the doctors. I would have to be at least on this protocol until the results come back, which were you, he said the earliest would be Friday. Were you offered a rapid test? They said they do not do the rapid test. 
Um, if one can be obtained, are you willing to submit to a rapid test? I'm, I'm not willing to submit to anything right now <laughs> until we take care of the issues that, that's at hand. I mean, I've already been placed on the protocol. I'm, frankly, I'm a, very afraid right now because I, I don't know what's going on. I've, this is new to me. Like I said, I'm fully vaccinated, Your Honor. I've been fully vaccinated since 2021. So for this to just be sprung on me now to say this could possibly be a COVID thing. I've had people close to me that have passed away from COVID. I'm afraid as hell, Your Honor. That's the reason why I submitted the ICF for the adjournment. I was thinking at least until I can get the results at, at bare minimum. I don't think I'm asking something that's Sir, impossible for if your I can right? make arrangements to have a rapid test brought to you and administered, are you willing to submit to that test? Not at this time. Why not? Not at this time. Why not? Why not? Why can't I get the results for the test I already took? But you're telling me you're scared? You're yes, fearful? Yes, I am. I but you am don't want to take a test that might I tell took, you today? I took the test that, <laughs> rapid test. that he, he gave me. <laughs> Barbara said rapid test. And if you're telling felt, me that test result won't be available to you until at least Friday. At least Friday. That's what I was so told. tomorrow. I was told that I would be so placed on after. this protocol until the results came back. The earliest that the results would be back would be Friday. Um, I am I'm asking you once again if a rapid test Oh, that would be, be obtained, good, Deborah. Are you willing to take a rapid test? How would that be obtained? And... You said at this point you're not willing to take a rapid test. Well, they said they said this the is the test that they knew when he was telling me when he told me how the test because I like I said there was a lieutenant and two well, officers was right going here. on. Blah, 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 blah. I understand and, all of that. I have a very specific was, question to I know, right, Glenn? Him questions and he's he specifically told me that this jail, <laughs> this is the test that they do. They do not do rapid tests. I didn't even ask about the test because I know nothing about the test. This is what After I was he told. told me that I said, okay, fine. Just do the test. And I think if I was his mother, I would probably have abandoned him. Okay. I'm sorry. I had to say that. I'll just sit on the protocol because at first when he told me, you know, you're going to have to be on a protocol where you're isolated. I said, okay, fine. Just, just do the test. I'd rather you do the test and make sure that I'm then to just refuse the test and just say, I just wait for it to see if I get better or something like that. So I said, yeah, just go ahead. And that's what I was afraid. Yeah. It would be the earliest that I would get the results back and I would be placed on a protocol, which is called isolation where I'm not allowed out of my cell. Uh, yes, your honor, a couple of things. Number one, we believe this is nothing more than a further delay tactic by Mr. Brooks. Get him so the court, uh, as an officer of the court and as an offer of proof that he is how can how Mr. could that Brooks, how could that even ever interrupt you when you were talking well i respectfully object you that. can object your objections noted but you need to let her state what she needs to state i will give you an opportunity to respond that, i'd encourage you to use paper and a pen to write down that's the rules of decorum in the courtroom sir we generally avoid interrupting one another a sign that we all understand that this is a place of dignity. It is a place of respect. Thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, uh, again, we believe this is a delay tactic in line with the defendant's behavior since about the August 25th or 26th motion hearing. I can advise the court uh, as an officer of the court that Mr. Brooks has been saying for the last several weeks in his recorded jail calls to his mother and others that he's gonna get this trial delayed or adjourned or pushed back. This behavior, again, on the 11th hour is 100% consistent with that. We're at five days right now. And certainly the court's offer to- I never once said- Mr. Brooks, I never have said, an opportunity I never, no, momentarily. No, no you I need respectfully to object to that because that- Judy, he despises opera because she calls him out on his crap. And she always kind of had a little bit more of an edge at him than the judge did. You know, we the, the judge was holding her edge till the end, but opera was able to kind of throw throw it through, throw a few zingers at him. That has no merit. Uh, Mr. Brooks, I, it's not your said, time no, to speak. No, I respectfully object. I never reported. I never reported saying what day. I never said a day. And if you you saying she's saying she has jail phone calls well why why aren't they present why can't they be verified by sworn affidavit and, and, and brought into this court to be shown 
that this is a delay tactic, as you say it is. How come it can't be shown by sworn affidavits? Over no, I didn't refuse moment, anything. I didn't refuse Mr. Brooks, anything. We are at I'm the not, point I'm not gonna, yet again I'm not gonna, I'm not where gonna I sit. will put you in the other courtroom because and you I are not consent, able. I don't consent to being removed. <laughs> I have not waived the right to be present, and I don't agree with that. Mr. Brooks, does it? Does the I record have reflect? provided does you the, on multiple occasions the, and it should be in front of you. No, I, don't not, I, don't, I don't acknowledge that. I haven't agreed you to You have been it, advised on multiple occasions that you need to abide by the standards of courtesy and decorum for the courts of Wisconsin. Uh, because you are a, a named litigant. defendant, you are now acting as your own attorney. Teresa said, but I would have disowned him. I'm not a fan of mommy dearest, but he abused her and she had a restraining order against him, just like his nephew and Erica. Yeah, I guess after you try to shoot at your cousin and um, to kill him, and then run over your girlfriend, um, there's going to be some question marks there as to whether or not you'd want to allow him back in your home. I can't believe that all this goes into one person, and yet he was walking the streets. He was still out. Oh, Glenn, good call. He says he doesn't, un she, he doesn't understand that she says officer of the court means she has an ethical obligation to tell the truth. Opera with the tr the facts, the truth, and the shade. Boom. Mic drop. <laughs> Are we reading your mind over there, Lori? He's creepy as hell. Yeah. Attorney, by representing yourself, I recognize the name that, that all of the this of courtesy and decorum apply to you. I don't recognize that name, Your um, Honor. That Supreme is not Court who I Rule sixty-two point oh two. Room. I've referenced a couple of them. If we write him in jail and tell him that we filed a claim, do you think he'd talk to us? We filed a claim, and what was the other one? We don't believe that you had subject matter jurisdiction and we would like to speak with you. Wouldn't that be funny? Um, on multiple yeah. occasions, including um, sub one sub F of 62.02, .02, advise us on the record again of your job title and responsibilities. I'm the jail administrator for the Waukesha County Sheriff's Department. I am head of the division in charge of all staff and inmate issues. I can speak to the protocol Mr. Brooks has placed on that it won't affect the area he is living in. Um, I love how he brought up all this stuff saying, yeah, this will definitely get me out of it. I'm, 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 you know, this will give me a couple of days. Whether he, whatever he was using those couple of days for didn't matter because he was thinking he was going to get them right. And then they're like, oh, hang on just a second. We have someone here that needs to speak. <laughs> And boom, here she is. Nor access to um, areas where that are not other inmate occupied. So he, it, he would remain in his current cell housing location. Um, he would have access to a conference room um, if he needed it, access to a telephone, and we can safely produce him for court. <laughs> so no, you, I know the next thing y'all are going to say is, let's see, let's watch the results. I don't have it. Before y'all even ask, I don't have it. It's on another thing. It's on another file. You're not a nurse. You're a fantastic attorney. <laughs> when did he pull a gun on mommy, Barbara? Barbara, you want to come up and chat? Steve, you want to come up and chat? You don't have to be on camera if you don't want to. You could be like me. You could hide your face in shame, as I do, and just have a microphone. Come on, you guys. Who wants to be up? Dawn didn't have the restraining order. The nephew had shot in the head. Shot at, shot at had the, uh, the order. And lived with Dawn. And because the mother kept bailing him out, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, but I, I wonder if anything was ever done or said to those judges or... 
that let him out on bail like that. Isn't one of them still involved with one of these cases that he's doing right now? The the male judge? Wasn't he one? The one? Glenn says, I wonder, legit wonder how he legitimately thought this would end. Like, he really did think he could get away with it. Yeah, you know what? You're right. He did. He believed that he was... I think at some point, he believed that he was winning. I love how all the sovereign citizens people are the same ones that are out there trying to get government um, money to help them day by day. And you know, there were some days when he would te- when he would ask a question or something, and he felt like, "Oh, I just did, I just did awesome on that, man. I was just." You could just tell how he had that swagger, and you were I going, "Really, him. really, you really think that was good?" Okay, Opie. <laughs> Dopey. <laughs> Um, as I was changing out of my honor guard uniform into my duty uniform, um, I heard multiple uh, police sirens emanating from the downtown area. Um, I subsequently tracked uh, our reporting system and observed that there was a call for service that officers were responding to an emergency fashion reference a subject with a knife. Um, I heard via our primary channel um, fellow officers screaming hysterically on the radio. Uh, requesting people to respond to the downtown area and the parade route. Um, Upon arrival, uh, to describe what was just absolute chaos, Um, as I'd exited my fleet, I looked east and westbound on Main Street. Um, There were civilian subjects uh, lying on the ground in every direction I looked, um, screaming, yelling, etc. Did you uh, attempt to render aid to these individuals? I did. I uh, ran in a westerly direction between Clinton and Maple, uh, attempting to render aid to two elderly female subjects. And here he's going to explain that he ran into Officer Skolton, who is the officer who shot at the vehicle when Brooks was still driving through the parade. After driving down Main Street, Darrell then went off into a nearby neighborhood, drove through a few backyards, And after realizing that the car would not go any further, he dumped it there in between two of the homes. The radio traffic was complete chaos with uh, people screaming about injured uh, participants of the parade being all over the downtown area. Um, Good morning, everybody. How are we? Good morning, Mama Gemini, Pink Cats, Barbara Schultz. Miss Barbara, thank you for doing some moderating on my behalf. I do appreciate you still. Uh, D Barbie, good morning. I don't know if you guys heard me earlier when I first came on. I-, I apologize that I'm not giving any kind of notice when I'm doing these. I still have not gotten a pattern as to when I'm going live. I just get these little spurts and I'm like, oh, let's talk about this one. Uh, this is the officer who found the, the abandoned vehicle that Don... Don Woods' abandoned vehicle that Daryl Brooks was driving the day he ran through the Waukesha Christmas Parade. And I've done a little bit of commentary, and then I want to, together with you guys, do some commentary on Daryl's cross, cross, um, because it's just so ridiculous. You know how ridiculous he is. I was moving my fleet uh, near um, Donny Boyce Tavern on Main Street. Um, I subsequently observed a male Hispanic running towards me, waving his hands frantically to garner my attention. And as uh, I asked him what he needed, um, he subsequently stated he knew where the vehicle was. And I subsequently told him to get into my squad car and uh, began traveling with him. Um, We traveled approximately two blocks to the area uh, where I subsequently located the vehicle in the driveway. How did you know it was the vehicle you were looking for? based off what Officer Skolton had previously described to me um, as a red Ford Escape. I observed a heavily damaged red Ford Escape in the driveway of 338 Maple. Uh, This particular vehicle was heavily damaged in the front end. I also observed that uh, there was clothing embedded in the hood, as well as a headband with blue lighting hanging from the side mirror. Additionally, I observed a- Do you guys see he says clothing hanging from the hood. I guess he's talking about that right there. I was thinking he might have been talking about here, but. A bullet hole in the windshield on the uh, passenger side. When you cleared the vehicle, were there any subjects present inside the vehicle? There were not. So here on the hood, near the windshield, was a hat 
And then clearly seen hanging from the driver's side mirror is a headband that's partially illuminated. What do you mean illuminated? Uh, this particular headband had multiple, appeared to be blue LED lighting. So that headband, and I don't have to tell you guys, because you guys are like me. You watch this stuff so much. Y'all know more than I do <laughs> about this trial. But this was the uh, illuminated headband that the dancing teams were wearing. I think all of them had one on. So, you know, if we talk about evidence, and it gets better because he finds the registration in the car, registered to, John, to Don Woods, and then also inside the car was some paperwork. I don't know if it was mail or if it was paperwork. Uh, drop it like it's hot in the chat if you know. Um, that actually said it had Darrell's name on it. So talk about dumb. Let's pull up this. Uh, let's watch his cross exam on this. That was Virginia Sorensen's hat. Barbara Barbara says that red hat. Was it red? Yeah. Virginia Sorensen was uh, one of the dancing grannies who passed, they say, immediately um, after being hit. Also, hearsay response, Your Honor. Um, I, I would agree hearing that again. Sustained. Did he, did he at all tell you that he saw someone in the vehicle? Objection. Hearsay. Grounds. Sustained. Grounds for the sustained? Um, it's hearsay. Grounds. To ask him what Mr. Lascano told him would be hearsay. So all, so all Mr. Lascano did was just direct you to the vehicle? That's correct. Brilliant testimony. That's all you guys talked about during your trip to the vehicle. Objection. Did he say anything? Because it was very vague. Well, you know, of course it was Brooks. It was a very vague question. And the officer says, no. And Brooks says, so y'all just rode silently in the car together? <laughs> I can't find that spot. But I just thought that was funny. I'm sorry. I can't help it. I love all these long pauses that Eric recall, that he causes. Mr. Lascano uh, yelling that there were subjects standing outside of the building. Objection, Your Honor. Well, I'm, I'm going to excuse the jury while I take up a legal issue. I'll rise for the jury, please. Oh, yeah. This is the fun part. If you are attempting to offer it for the truth of the matter asserted, which is what I believe you are doing, you're attempting to establish the veracity of something Mr. Lascano either said or didn't say through another witness. That is hearsay. So it's not hearsay for the... Uh, the prosecutor to bring up. Uh, I'm not going to talk about other rulings. There's been an objection by the state, and I'm sustaining the objection, and I'm directing you not to ask this witness questions that would call for this witness to say what Mr. Lascano said. That is hearsay. That is textbook hearsay, Mr. Brooks. And then I don't think it's fair for the for me to object to hearsay from the uh, prosecution of, about uh, along the lines of the same type yeah, of thing. I'm not going to have a debate on what may have come in previously. Um, I know you've made a number of hearsay objections, many of which uh, the answers that were being provided were not hearsay. Um, <laughs> but I would direct your attention to 908.01 of the Wisconsin statutes. You have that book in front of you that I provided to you a number of days ago. He gets so frustrated when she pulls up all these statutes because he's like, oh, hell, she's going to make me read now. <laughs> yeah, he had her benefits card. Of course, he's using her, her uh, what do they call that? The, is that that DEB card or whatever? Bamba says he wants to see what's on the ceiling since he stares up so much. He's staring up. That's his big eye roll for the judge. As much as she helped him, all he did was get so irritated with her, which kind of gives... I mean, it's a huge insight into how he was with all the women in his life because they all were helping him. They all were enabling him. And yet he, he just acts like you just, oh, you get on my nerves. At the beginning of this trial or near the beginning of this trial, there's the definitional section of the statutes, which defines hearsay. Uh, 
it also and then if you go on to 908.02 that's obviously one you may want to look at Ooh, well. did y'all see that look um, and then 90803 has the exception. So unless you Clearly. can give me an exception, sir, as to why this witness should be allowed to answer those questions, I'm going to, again, directly not to answer directly from questions. his report, the report that he that he wrote. Nothing nothing is coming from, I'm reading directly from his report. That's that what I have to say. doesn't change the fact that it's hearsay. You said what? That doesn't change the fact that it's hearsay. So that his report is hearsay? another level of hearsay. It's an out-of-court statement. So Not his... this witness made, but what another witness made. So you have to... So I can't read from his report that he wrote. Um, you can't ask this witness questions that call for a hearsay answer unless there's no objection from the state. Or you can convince me there's an exception to the hearsay rule that applies. Do you have an exception you'd like to offer to the court? So I might as well not read the report that he wrote then if I can't question him about the report that he wrote. Because you know I didn't prepare for this cross-examination, and you know all I was doing was depending upon reading on this report the whole time that I'm crossing him. And as I pause to read, I want everybody to sit here and wait on me. He doesn't have any idea what hearsay means. You'd think he would, though, by, by this point. That's your misunderstanding, sir, what is hearsay. Um, and I, I, all I can tell you is I'm sustaining the objection. I'm going to bring the jury back out um, and... We'll go from there. Shaking my head. Madam Clerk, bring the jury out, please. Clear bias. Clear bias. That statute. Oh, good point. Barbara, you always know all the facts. Barbara says that statute book is $75 book that the judge gave to him. He used it as a paperweight. <laughs> right? It that that book was used so that he could display his uh, Bible that he supposedly was reading the entire time that you know he was going through this because he's such a Christian man. Mr. Brooks, I understand you I may I disagree to with or me. Agree to being called that name. For the record, again, I'm here as a third party intervener on behalf of my client. I don't know why that's not understood by now. I don't know why y'all don't understand that y'all can't call me that. <laughs> Has anybody figured that out yet? Has anybody figured it out? If you had, tell me in the chat. Because he actually, at some points, he answers to, he answers it as if he just totally breaks his whole, you know, what he's saying, don't call me that name. And then at other times, he, he, it's almost like he's like, no, I don't, I'm not that person. That's a different person. I'm, 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 I'm an attorney today. Today, I'm an attorney. That's my other personality that's over there that did all that. Ooh, look at that look. And he thinks that every time they talk, they're talking about him, which if they are, it's about the trial. And But he, in his mind, man, he's like, they're over there making fun of me. So what's the third party intervener name? You know what, Elizabeth? That is a great point. If Darrell was able to give his lawyer, his persona, his lawyer, a name, what would it be? Let's come up with one. The straw man. We should come up with a good a good name. I well I already did. I call him Scrappy Brooks. But if you have any other names, please feel free to type them in the chat. I guess I can't bring up the plaintiff either, huh? <laughs> well shoot. Take it agreement. Oh. <laughs> All right. I gotta see his facial expressions. I love when he gets mad at the judge. When he, like, when he feels frustrated, that's my favorite part. Is when he gets so frustrated, and then of course you know the way he is, it all turns to anger eventually. But in that little bitty part where he's just frustrated and feels like he can't win, it's I love that. I love it when he gets that way. Super lawyer doesn't have a name. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. Continue with your question, sir. Oh, I got a tree of lightning. Uh, the jury will disregard that last comment. Oh, wow. <laughs> and that one as well. 
It's not Bias. an opportunity to testify. You'll be given an I'll opportunity testify. should you choose I'll later, testify. sir, but please question the witness. If, if I could ever get to it, I'll do that. And again, the jury will disregard that statement. He's such a child. It's not evidence. Such a child. <sighs> hey, you guys ever notice that when there's a they're showing a trial, that there's always people in the audience that cough you like made crazy. To a hat, being on the hood. Can we pull it? Uh... And you know what's crazy here is this is how this is how ignorant he is. He's gonna pull up instead of avoiding this whole picture of these items on top of the car that show clearly the evidence that this car was the one that ran in over these people he's going to actually bring it up here exhibit 99 up again are you asking the state to do that sir yeah, can, can it please be pulled up and sure published? it can and it will Ooh, that look the jury can let me know when it's on the screens in the jury box, please. Oh, poor Darrell. Mama done taking his pacifier away. All right. It's in the jury box. Continue, please. You testified to this being a hat, right? That's correct. And from this picture, can you tell what that is? Uh, not specifically. So how do we know if, if that's a hat from looking at this picture? Uh, from looking at this picture, uh, it would be difficult to determine if that's actually a hat. So it would be fair to say you don't know what that is? Based on this picture, you're Based right. Based on this picture? Based on this picture, I'm not able to determine what that item is. Would it be also fair to say we can't even determine if that's outside or inside of the vehicle at that point? I would disagree and say that is on the exterior of the vehicle. And how would you the make that assumption if you can't tell what it is? Objection. Grounds. Sustained. Grounds. Form of the question. Can you clear that? Thank you, Madam Clerk. You can definitively say from this picture that you can tell where the item is based on this picture. Yes. Are you going off what you found or what you can see from the picture? I can see from this picture that that item is on the exterior of the vehicle between the hood that is destroyed and the windshield. Look at so it's him. on the hood? <laughs> it is between the hood and the windshield of the vehicle. And you can tell that from this picture? Objection as an answer. Grounds. Argumentative. Grounds. Sustained as to both grounds. And from this picture, you can tell what this is. And it's so obvious that he hasn't had, that he didn't plan any of this out. Like, what did he do in his cell every night? Because you know he wasn't reading the Bible. What did he do in his cell every night in between these, the, the, these trial days? Did he not, like, prepare for the upcoming, hey, Judy, did he not prepare for the upcoming trial the day like the witnesses that were coming in if i squint my <laughs> if i squint my eyes more the jury will think you're lying <laughs> that's hilarious yes that's what i'm saying judy he does he realize that he's actually bringing more emphasis to the item on the car than what they he's again as we've always said he's doing the prosecutor's job he's mad that she won't be intimidated by him the judge won't and neither will any of the prosecutors or the witnesses. Yes. Just from the picture? Yes. And how do you come to that determination? Based on the fact that it's hanging on the exterior of the vehicle from the driver's side mirror, um, that it is in the shape of a headband and it is partially illuminated in this photograph with LED lighting. It could it, it could be fair to say that it's anything. Would you not say that that's fair? Just from looking at the picture, it doesn't 
necessarily say or it doesn't it's not 100 percent identifiable from this picture would, would that be fair to say objection compound question sustained us to the form of the question please rephrase just from strictly looking at this picture you can't positively say what the item is objection that's a mischaracterization of his testimony sustained okay i have a question you know how when they bring in evidence and they'll lay it out like on a table in the in the evidence room and they'll have like the little markers next to it and they'll take the photos, the, the police photos. Why didn't they bring up any of that stuff when he started with all this? I guess they didn't I guess they didn't have to. I guess that it was just so ridiculous, his cross, that it was like there's no point in even doing that. I mean they could I'm sure there's a better picture of this that they could actually go in closer with if they wanted to argue what he's saying. But I guess what he's trying to say is so ridiculous that they realize the jury's going to see right through it. Please rephrase. Clear, clear, clear the photo. You're asking Madam Clerk to please clear, clear the photo. Mr. Brooks, I'd ask that you show some deference to my clerk and not bark orders at her and use Ooh. simple courtesy. Thank you. And thank you, Madam Clerk. Will I be awarded the same, Your Honor? Ah, any other individual right then and there would have said, oh, I apologize. Thank you, Madam Clerk. But not Darrell. Oh, no. He's going to bring it back to himself. Please ask your next question, sir. Will I be awarded the same, Your Honor? Please ask your next question. I, I, I will. I just want to know if I'll be awarded the same. I have been. Same. Thank you. Please continue. Did you talk to anyone uh, who lived in the residence? I don't recall the specific persons I talked to or where they resided. So it's fair to say you talked to someone? There were multiple people outside of the residence and in the area at that time that I spoke briefly to. But you don't know if any of them was the uh, renter or owner of the driveway? I do not recall. Do you recall asking anyone if the um, if the vehicle belonged to somebody who may have stayed in that general area? I do not recall asking that question to anyone. I didn't need to ask that question to anyone because the registration of the vehicle was inside of the vehicle listed to Don Woods, who is your biological mother, along with paperwork having your name on it inside the vehicle as well. You did state that you cleared the area. Would, would that be fair to say? No, I said I cleared the vehicle, not the area. Did you, did you clear the area? Uh, eventually, we did clear the back portion of the residence to ensure there were no suspects or victims. Who, who is we? We. Persons of law enforcement. And did you wait until law enforcement came before you started to do that? He is law enforcement. Start on your own kind of way. Upon arrival to the location of the suspect vehicle, I was by myself, so I initially cleared the vehicle to ensure that there were no potential threats to myself. When I advised dispatch that I had located the suspect vehicle, numerous officers came to assist me and were there relatively quickly to help me secure the area. There you go. So would it be fair to say when you found the vehicle that you didn't locate anyone inside the vehicle? Correct. No one was located inside. Judy says she hit a deer many years ago and she couldn't. Can you imagine? It rat It does rattle you. Do you know that I get rattled if I run over like a squirrel or something? Um, even if it's already been run over, like if, it, if there's something dead in the road and I run over it again, I always like, oh, can you imagine? And it doesn't affect him at all? I, do I don't understand. The vehicle at that time. And you also stated that you cleared the vehicle for possible threats to yourself. If no one was in the vehicle, what did you need to clear the vehicle of what would be the threat? Based on, again, as I early, earlier stated, um, what had occurred in the downtown, plus the fact that Officer Skolden had fired rounds at this vehicle, I was unsure uh, who or what may be inside the vehicle. Uh, given the time of day as it was becoming dusk, it was getting harder to see outside. So to ensure my own safety, I cleared it the way I earlier stated. 
So would it be fair to say that, well, let me back up. You, you took this photo, correct? That is correct. So that would mean you were, at least by that time, sure that no one was in the vehicle. Would that be fair to say? That is correct. So did you clear the vehicle before taking the picture or afterward? I cleared the vehicle before I took the photograph. Did you find any threats in there? After I initially cleared it, no. It was deemed <laughs> to not be a threat to my person. And some of the questions are just so pointless. It's just a waste of everybody's time. Yes, he's un the unfairness, Barbara, and, and the biased. The biased. Did you do any any other investigating after you had uh, took this photo? Can you rephrase the question? Did you do any other investigating after you took this photo? I. Uh... After the photographs were collected of the vehicle in place from multiple angles, um, I did locate uh, identifying information inside the vehicle. What I'm asking is, so let me back up. So that was the extent of your investigation was finding whatever you found in the vehicle at that point. Correct. Ground. Wait, what did he just say? So. Wait, I got to rewind that. Did, you, did that make any sense what he just said? Finding whatever you found in the vehicle at that point. Hmm. Hang on. Correct. It was deemed to not be a threat to my person. Did you do any, any other investigating after you had uh, took this photo? Can you rephrase the question? Did you do any other investigating after you took this photo? I, uh, after the photographs were collected of the vehicle in place from multiple angles, um, I did locate uh, identifying information inside the vehicle. What I'm asking is, so let me back up. So that was the extent of your investigation was finding whatever you found in the vehicle at that point. Correct. Grounds. I'll withdraw. Thank you. Correct. Judge is like, nah, just let him so burn himself. When you were clearing the vehicle, would it be fair to say that you could have did, done the, invest, the same investigational work at that time? No, that would not be fair to say. And why not? Because when you're clearing a vehicle to ensure that there are no threats to you, you're not looking for anything specific as far as evidentiary value. You're looking for a threat to your person. So you would clear the vehicle of threats after being in the vehicle to do that and then go back into the vehicle and look for or start investigating rather. Does he really think he sounds like an attorney when he's doing this? Do y'all think he really thinks that? Like he really believes I sound intelligent when I'm asking these questions. Correct. Why not do them all at once? Is that a, a procedural thing or? Yes, oh my goodness. Answer, Your Honor, I object. Rounds. Sustained. Rounds. Next question. Is it usually procedure to investigate later on after clearing for threats? Yes, you always want to ensure that where you're working on an investigation is clear of threats and that you are safe. Would that be the same protocol if you were searching a, a, a home? Objection relevance. Grounds. Sustained. <laughs> yeah, he's a legal genius. Grounds for the sustained. Relevance. That's the name of his lawyer persona, legal genius. In his mind. And you may mention that the vehicle wasn't, I guess I would say, touched or uh, bet between the time that you were flagged down with the location of the vehicle until you actually observed the vehicle, you stated that you don't believe the vehicle was, was touched in any way in that time? 
objection. That's a misstatement of his care of his testimony. Grounds to get, he said something similar to sustained um, as to the form of the question. Do you find yourself, guys? Do you find yourself as you're watching Darrell, you know, pe piece these little questions in his head together and spit them out in court? Do you find yourself leaning in? to the tv a little bit going okay let's what wh what and and because and, i kind of find myself leaning in and doing a little squinting almost like i want to help him get it out get it out spit it out are you sure that the vehicle is not touched in the time that you were flagged down about the location of the possible vehicle and observing the vehicle i am unaware if the vehicle was manipulated in any fashion from the time that mr Lascano flagged me down and to the time that I located the vehicle in the driveway. Do you know approximately how long it took you to get to the vehicle when you were initially flagged down about the location of the vehicle? I do not know how long it took me uh, to get to the vehicle upon being flagged down. So it's possible that it could have been manipulated. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yes, it's possible. They were decorating this vehicle with these At the time items. that you uh, located the vehicle, <sighs> <laughs> Psychic said he's a wannabe. He wannabe rapper. He's a wannabe lawyer, and now he wanna be free. <laughs> Were you aware of uh, any suspect identification or name? Can you restate your question, please? At the time you located the vehicle, were you aware of any suspect or name of suspect? No, I was unaware of any names of any suspect involved in the incident at the time I located the vehicle. Of course not. And when did you learn of that information, if you learned of that information? So he's, and I don't understand why he always says that either about, the, you know, he, as if he's, well, I guess he's trying to say that these people learned about him, they saw stuff on the news, and that's, so they're biased. They're biased because of what they've seen. And please understand, guys, I know how to say bias, okay? And I, I know it. I'm just repeating what Darrell says. Um, so they, they, they're tainted. They're tainted witnesses because they've watched this stuff on the, on the, on the news and the media already. No, the uh, identifying information, again, for Mr. Brooks that was inside the vehicle did not match the uh, registration on file with the Wisconsin Department of Transportation for the registration of the vehicle, which was Don L. Woods. Uh, for the record, I don't identify by that name. Yet again, stating that. Oh. For the record. Um, for the record, the jury will disregard that commentary by the defendant, and it also mischaracterizes <laughs> the witness's testimony. It does not. I was just stating for the record. Again, the jury will disregard. Uh, that so, commentary I as Mr. Brooks is not presently testifying. The information you found in the car. The vehicle was not registered to that person, correct? correct? Correct. It was. It was. It was registered to the mother of the person. So, let's bring a attention to that. That at any time, multiple people can utilize that vehicle. Would that be fair to say? Objection. Speculation. Grounds. Uh, calls for speculation sustained. Would you agree that? A vehicle registered to one person and information found by another person constitutes that more than one person used the vehicle. So this is the part where I know, right? His mama didn't drive, Chitty. His mama, um, apparently, even Erica said his mom didn't drive. So by her, did she buy this vehicle for him? I'm kind of wondering about that. But I also, I question how he kind of talks about how other people could be driving the vehicle. Just like him saying, were there other people in the vehicle? As if he was trying to say that there was somebody else in the vehicle driving. He was just a passenger. And it's almost like he's trying to blame his mom and say his mom was driving. I, I'm beside myself on this one. I, I don't know. Okay. So Bama Green Eyes says that he read somewhere that he was trying to indicate it was his nephew that was driving. Well, we, knew, we do know that as much as he loves his sister, his, that's no longer with us, that um, he tries to do everything, including shoot his nephew. So, yeah, it would make sense that he wants to throw his nephew under the bus on this one. Objection. Grounds. Grounds. Uh, go ahead, you. 
the, the, the question was, <laughs> does that prove that more than one person could drive the car? That's an improper question. That, that wasn't the question. Um, well, sustained as to the form of the question and assumes facts, not in evidence. State that last part again. What, what? It assumes facts, not in evidence, your question. Your next question, please. Is it fair to say that yeah, people gee. leave all types of information in, in family members' vehicles at any time? Objection, Grounds. irrelevant, speculation. Oh, for crying sustain. out loud. Grounds for the sustain. Ask your next question, Mr. Brooks, please. May I have the grounds, please? The objection has been sustained. Ask your next question, please. May I have the grounds? The court's not answering that. The record is self-evident. Once again, he won't accept. Here's what I found. <laughs> well, sir, I don't know what a tacit agreement is, so please keep going. <laughs> I don't know what a tacit agreement is. Um. <laughs> oh, I gotta play that. We gotta play that back again. The court's not answering that. The record is self-evident. Is that a tacit agreement? Oh, sir, I don't know what a tacit agreement is, so please keep going. <laughs> clearly know what it is. Um, you clearly know what it is. <laughs> for the state, and this is along the lines of the same question. Would it be fair to say that at, at some point you've left items in other people's vehicles? Objection. Grounds. Relevance. Sustained. <sighs> Grounds for the sustain. Look at Zach. Next question, please, sir. I've sustained this question multiple times, multiple ways. You've asked question. it. Next question, please. May I have the grounds? 90611, sir. May I have the grounds? Next question, please. Is it to relevancy? Is it to Under 90611, ask your next question or I will cut off. Okay. Who, who in the chat thinks that he actually stopped ever? As many times as she's referenced, 90611. Does anybody in the chat believe that Brooks took time to stop and read that? Go. <laughs> your cross-examination, please ask your next question, sir. You have to give the grounds, though, Your Honor. No, she doesn't. Especially if I'm really just asking for the grounds of the sustain. Sir, ask your next question. What's the point of me asking questions if I can't ask anything? The jury will disregard his commentary <laughs> that he just stated right now. <laughs> Do you recall speaking to, uh, well, you, you said you spoke to a few people you didn't know if they were the owner of the house or the driveway or the renter. Would that be fair to say? Yes, that's correct. You know what? You're right. You know, he doesn't operate like a normal human being. And, you know, he's probably, if he ever did read it, he didn't agree with it. So in his mind, it doesn't matter. It doesn't count. Did anyone you spoke to give you a description of a possible driver? I was given multiple descriptions by multiple parties um, of multiple suspects that had fled the vicinity of the vehicle. And what do you mean by multiple descriptions by, of multiple suspects? Two, multiple, three, four people? Multiple people saw five. you. I was given information that uh, one male black suspect that was taller, wearing um, blue pants and black, had run southbound on Maple towards college. Additionally, I was given information that two shorter male blacks wearing gray sweatpants had run in a westernly direction from behind the residence at 338 Maple. And then later I was also given a, another description of a male black, um, unknown height, wearing uh, like a gray sweatshirt. And so once again, he brings to the attention for the prosecution of the evidence of him running away from the scene. Yeah, Elizabeth, I don't, you know, I, again, I want to see the jury. I want to hear from a juror so bad. And maybe, um, so I think there's still a gag order on them. Is there still? And until his appeal is whatever happens with it happens, they're not going to let any of the jurors talk. I would, uh, that makes sense to me. Yeah, the prosecution states the grounds, and he doesn't allow 
he doesn't anytime they state the grounds he ignores it because he wants to hear the grounds from the judge every time it's got to be spoon, spoon fed from her grounds pants you said medium height for the last description unknown height i know okay i'm sorry i know height. yeah you're did, right did Chudley. anyone you talk to report uh, the sound of a crash no no one i spoke to uh, at this location reported anything regarding the sound of a crash did you see any signs that there may have been a crash when you once you and other officers were secu securing the area uh, as far as the vicinity around the vehicle or the vehicle itself the, the general area as far as the general area given the time of day I was unable to determine if there was any signs of a crash in that vicinity so in other words, he just threw it around again and hurt himself there because now he's saying, no, there wasn't a crash. You didn't crash the vehicle right there by the house. You crashed the vehicle on the parade route and hundreds of people saw you do it. Hundreds of people. I wonder if any of the, Bama Green Eyes says, I wonder if any of the jur jurors has watched the video from the trial after the fact or even any of these commentary videos that all of us do here on YouTube. I wonder if they've watched any of it. Can you imagine? They're probably so sick to, of him, though. They are sick to death of him, I bet. So I don't know. They had to watch the funny stuff. Oh, I'd love to be a fly on the wall. Until the pill is over. You're right, Barbara. I think it's going to, they're not going to do anything. We're not going to hear from them at all. When talking to the uh, people that you, uh, while talking to the people that gave you the descriptions, um, did they identify themselves as living close or living in any of the houses in that area? No, due to the chaotic nature of the event, uh, I did not ascertain where these individuals lived or if they were associated with any neighboring residents. Do you know if they made in, uh, any other statements to any other law, law enforcement that was there present with you at that time? Not to my knowledge. Why do you think you, you uh, receive so many different descriptions of suspects? Uh, multiple people from multiple angles observed different things, and there was a lot of people there. It was a very chaotic event. Um, even this particular scene was chaotic and hectic with numerous people coming to and from, so it was difficult to determine um, that information. You know, I will say, there were a few times that old Durrell asked decent questions, and that probably was one of the good ones right there. We just saw it. We just saw it happen. It doesn't happen often. So you got to kind of pay attention when it does. Subconsciously, he's delighted at the attention of this trial. That is why narcissists are able to prey on normal people. I guess so. He does, when he did his, uh, in, he, he does kind of feel like he's a celebrity. And like when, and I guess we've kind of made him into one. Eh, sorry. When he went back, if you guys have seen those videos, I don't know if I still have it up or not, if I had to take it down. But where he goes back into court this, this past in February for that other trial. And he's in his little wheelchair and he's looking around to see if anybody's there looking for him or, you know, so the cameras can see him. It's just, oh, it's so odd. Did any of the people that you spoke with um, give any reason to why they, why the suspects that they identified were run from the scene? Objection. Speculation Grounds. also calls for hearsay. Grounds. Sustained. Grounds. Next question, sir. Do you recall the? Uh, any of the officers that were securing the scene with you having a canine present? Yes, I do. And do you recall what officer that was? That was Officer Bousman, who was a canine handler with the City of Waukesha Police Department. And eventually you left uh, the scene where the vehicle was found and uh, started searching the area? Yes, I uh, transferred 
command of that location to Officer Butchern, had him remain at that scene for scene security with additional City of Brookfield officer. And then myself, uh, K-9 Officer Bousman, and numerous other police officers from various departments conducted an area search uh, as we were conducting a K-9 track. Based on the information, I had obtained um, multiple suspects running from the area. And do you recall what time you went back to where you initially observed the vehicle? I do not know, uh, recall what time I made it back, but it was some hours later. And did you go back to your department after leaving from the, the scene where you found the uh, vehicle? Yes, I was directed by my command staff to return to the police department as the scene was still secured by other uh, law enforcement officers of various agencies. And were you instruct, instructed to make contact with anyone at that point? Yes, I was. I've... You call who? I do. May you stay for the jury and for the record? Yes, upon arrival to the police department, I was directed to make contact with District Attorney Sue Opper. Oh. And oh. when you say Sue Opper, are you referring to District Attorney Sue Opper? Yes, that's what I said. Is she here in court today? Yes, she is. Can you point her out for the jury? She's seated at the prosecution table wearing the gray cardigan. Uh, let the record reflect that the witness has identified uh, Attorney Opper. No objection, Your Honor. The record will still reflect. <coughs> and do you recall what the nature of the contact was with Attorney Opper? She told you what Yes, to I was directed to locate uh, Attorney Opper in the downtown area at the scene of the parade incident and subsequently transport her back to the City of Waukesha Police Department. So I'm assuming make contact with her at the parade, so you went and picked her up? That's correct. I picked her up in the area of Maple in Wisconsin. And we will be seeing a sequel of that called Driving Miss Opper. Um, correction, I'm sorry, the area of Maple and Main Street. And did you continue that contact after picking her up? And where did, oh, let me back up. Where did you go after picking up attorney Opera? As I stated, we uh, once I picked her up, I transported her back to the city of Waukesha Police Department. I love how when he keeps an when he answers these repeated questions from him, he goes, "As I stated." as I stated. And did you continue to have contact at that point? I did. And what was the nature of that contact? Uh, District Attorney Opper and I uh, worked together to draft a search warrant for the uh, 2010 Red Ford Escape SUV that was in the driveway of 338. Maybe. Oh, it was a conspiracy. Uh, a search warrant? Correct. Initially, when you secure, secured the vehicle and then investigated the vehicle after securing it, <laughs> what did you need to search for at that point that you needed a search warrant? After I cleared the vehicle and located those items of identifying nature, that was done due to the exigency of the event and identifying any outstanding suspects. After that was done and photographed in place, I re-secured the vehicle and it was no longer touched at that point. So therefore, later on, it was required to have a search warrant to continue processing that vehicle for items of evidentiary value. We're with you, Ashley. So you just stated that the vehicle wasn't touched between those times. So what, what if anything new did you need to search for? Objection, argumentative. Well, um, overall, he may answer. The basis of the search warrant was to ensure that, again, any items of evidentiary value I may have overlooked due to, again, the exigency of trying to find identifying information of an outstanding suspect, as well as clearing the vehicle for safety reasons. That is the pur purpose of the search warrant, is to do a more slow, methodical search of the vehicle 
for said items of evidentiary value. But it would be fair to say that after initially um, clearing the vehicle, for, as you said, for any possible threats to, to you and investigating the vehicle further a second time, what did you feel would be of evidentiary value at that point that you hadn't already observed before? Objection. Asked and answered. Grounds. Argumentative. Grounds. I'm referring to him stating the evidentiary value. Asked and answered. Sustained. Yep. So what was the evidentiary value that you were looking for? Same objection. With the, with the search warrant. It's the same question a different way. So I'm going to sustain Tapping that it. prison pen. Next question, please. <laughs> Can you give an example of what evidentiary value is? Oh, gosh. Um, something of evidentiary value can really be anything that's pertinent to the case. Um, an example would be like a shell casing or a spot of blood that can render DNA results, things of that nature. Did you find uh, any of those things when Boom. obtaining the search? Did you find any of those things? Okay, let's talk about the evidentiary value of these items that you found against me. So stupid. Objection. Grounds. Well, that's factually inaccurate, Your Honor. It assumes a fact, not an evidence. I'll sustain the objection as to the form of the question. Did you find, upon, upon attaining the search warrant, were you able to find anything of evidentiary value? Same objection. Grounds. Assumes a fact, not an evidence, it's Your Honor. Sustained. It assumes facts, not in evidence. Please rephrase and establish a foundation related to whether this witness performed that subsequent search. After okay. After obtaining the search warrant, did you yourself go back in, search the vehicle? No. Do you recall what officer was dispatched to do to execute the search warrant? No, I do not know who uh, ultimately searched the vehicle for items of evidentiary value. We'll speed it up a little bit, guys. And um, you said it's be beyond your level, or something. I didn't catch where you said it was beyond your level or something. Oh, this it's is where he asked him. He asked him about forensic stuff, and he's. He said, trying to make the cop look bad. It's forensic text. I believe it's via electronic. Do you recall when you received that subpoena? Okay, here we go. This is the part we all love. His normal ending. Um, yes, do you know if there's a plaintiff in this matter? Warrant, uh, I was relieved of my duties. Did you... Did you ever come back into the investigation in any way after that point? After that point, no. <laughs> After your uh, part of the investigation ended, were you able to obtain any more information that you didn't know the night of your investigation? Question <laughs> vague. Grounds for speculation. <laughs> Sustained. Oh, oh Sustained. Lord. Please ask your next question. Do you recall having any more contact with uh, Attorney Opera after that initial night? No. You're right, Ashley. That was his go-to. When were you aware that it was a possibility that you could be called to testify in this matter? When I re received a subpoena to testify in this matter. Excuse me, I, I mean. When I received a subpoena to testify in this matter. Was that subpoena served to you by the district attorney's office? Yes, it was. was it? I think Darrell thought that Sue Opper walked around passing out these subpoenas personally. Do y'all think so? <laughs> He's in his mind. He's got a visual of Sue Opper just bouncing around. Like maybe she took a bicycle and just did deliveries of the subpoenas all throughout town. Served by attorney Opper? Um, I don't recall who served me directly. I believe it's via electronic. Do you recall when you received that subpoena? 
I don't recall the exact date, but it was a few months ago. So it's pretty recent, but a little a little time since you received it. Yes, that's fair to say. Would you by chance know who the plaintiff is in this matter? Oh, Grounds. here we go. Relevance. Grounds. Sustained. Ever seen or talked to the plaintiff? Had any physical interaction with the plaintiff in this matter? Objection, vague and compound Grounds. question. Sustained. You even know if there's a plaintiff in this matter? Objection, Grounds. irrelevant. Sustained. You know who filed the complaint in this matter? Did you file a complaint in this matter? Uh, the complaint was filed by the district attorney's office. Do you know if it was filed by Attorney Opper? <laughs> I don't know particularly who filed the complaint. I just know it was by the Waukesha County District Attorney's Office. He did, Judy. And he had no respect for what the court they did for him. Would it be fair to say that whoever files the complaint is a party to the matter? Objection. Beyond the scope of the witnesses, Your Honor. Oh, sustained. Next question. Grounds please. for the sustain, Your Honor. Really? Next question, please. <coughs> Any reason why the state of Wisconsin would be identified as the plaintiff when they did not file the complaint? Objection. Grounds. Argumentative misstatement of the law. Grounds. Sustained. That slippery state of Wisconsin never showed up. Ask your next question, please. Was that the grounds? Next question, please. You are so right, Judy. Deserves to know these. The jury needs to know. Last statement. I've sustained the objection, sir. Need to know. Ask your next question, please. I'm, I'm aware that it was a substantial. I'm, I'm aware. I just wanted to know the grounds. You can't keep hiding stuff from the jury. Mr. Oh. Brooks, the court is not hiding anything from anyone, and the jury will disregard that last statement. It is not evidence in any way in this case. Would it be fair to say that any case has a plaintiff? Objection. Grounds. Oh my yes. word. Um, sustained. Would it be? Can I rephrase the question? Go ahead. I can't say whether it will be answered or not, but you can go but ahead and I can't rephrase it. I can't rephrase, <laughs> just so we're clear. Whether it's answered or not, I can still rephrase the question. I. I I don't know what the question will be, sir, so I can't make a, a ruling that's advisory. So ask your next question, please. Are you aware that in any case brought into a courtroom, there has to be a plaintiff? Objection. Grounds. Same question. Grounds is it not also the also misstates question. the law, so sustained. Hello, everybody. Good morning. How are we? I hope my voice isn't too scratchy to do this today. Child, man. A man-child.
Oh, Barbara, you don't drink coffee. You drink tea. See, I'm a coffee girl. Speaking of which, if you'd like to support this channel, you can always buy me a coffee. Uh, I, had the, I think I have it starred above in the top of the comment section. There's a link there. Attorney man. Oh. <laughs> Eight inches of snow. Oh, my goodness. Amanda's coming in from West Georgia. Gray's watching from West or from watching from Delaware. JB's in Birmingham. Yep. Yeah, I was gonna say there's some other people in here that come up from North Alabama. Lots of trees down, several without power. That you know, going without power after a storm is probably the worst thing. We were when I was in Florida, what's September? It was September. I don't remember how many years ago. And I don't even remember the name of the doggone storm. We were without power for over two weeks. And you talk about making a strong person eventually break down in tears. I mean, it was just so miserable. It was hot. And I'm one of those who are like, people, somebody said, well, why don't you go get a hotel room? I'm like, if my dogs have to stay here in this, so am I. Oh, thank God for my neighbors who are just you know, rallying around everybody to help everybody because we all kind of suck it out together. Up in Maine, I'm snowed in. Oh, girl. Hey, Miss Bambi. Hey, Ann. Ann's coming in from Pennsylvania. Good morning from Tennessee, Pink Cats. JB, Trustville area. Lynette, they should put that SUV in one of those range smash rooms for the families to smash it. Oh, yeah. Gosh, you talk about being a powerful scene. Can you imagine? Mm. That's so sad. Amanda, you like Dunkin' Donuts too? I do. I just don't like the burnt taste of Starbucks. I don't, I guess I don't like the, the dark roast type of coffee, you know? But I like strong coffee, if that makes any sense. Okay. I, Mama Gemini, I got to tell you, I don't have any video. I don't have any audio. All I have is written stuff. But I'm going to do my best to make it sound as interesting as possible when I read it. So I apologize if that was misleading. But they don't. I, for, to my knowledge, there's no audio out yet. I want to keep y'all waiting. So I got some good stuff here. I've been doing a little bit of digging. Anne drinks Bones coffee. Ooh, I might try that. I have I have purchased online coffee before, like from... Oh, I forgot the name of it. Um, I had like a subscription to like a coffee thing, and it was pretty good, but it just... All right, one thing you guys have to know about me, and it might become an annoying because I know it becomes annoying to my sister, but I have this weird thing that I like to just do. I like to do impersonations, but like I like to do accents every now and then when I'm talking to you guys. So I hope it's not annoying because in my mind, it sounds really good. <laughs> All right. Let's get to what you guys came here for. Too much stuff. You can't see it, can you? All right. Oh, shoot, I can't see it. Hang on. How am I going to be able to read it if I can't see it? Okay. This is the criminal complaint that has the phone call stuff in it. Let me make sure this is the one. Yeah. So this was filed a long time ago. But it has a lot of good little uh, commentary in here from the phone calls that were happening between Darrell and Erica. This looks like before he went, before everything happened, really, well, before the court started. So this, well, no. Yeah. Okay, let me pull it up. Um, while you, I'm going to leave it up on here so you guys can see it. And then I'm going to pull it up on a different screen on my computer so I can read it better. South Africa, what is in the stream? That is awesome. Kim, welcome from South Africa. I have a friend here that just moved to Alabama, and she's from uh, South Africa, and I love her accent. It's beautiful. 
Okay. Um, yeah, I got to pull this up, guys, so I can see what I'm reading, y'all. I got to see it better because this isn't working for me. All right. So this was filed November 23rd, 2021. And this was the, the complaint that intentional, well, no, wait. Oh, dad blasted. I'm on the wrong one. Hang on. Bless my heart this morning. I'm not doing too hot. All right. What's the date of this one? This one is dated December 6, 2021 when it was prepared. Okay. And this is the complaint um, against Durrell for trying to intimidate Erica. And I'm not going to read all this mumble jumbo that you guys, you know, this legal junk. We're going to get straight to the meat of the of the matter. The heart of the matter or whatever. Okay. Upon conviction for this offense, Class G felony, he can be fined not more than $25,000 or imprisoned for 10 years. Well, I think we got that one wrapped up. Uh, okay. So here we go. Um, they mentioned bell jumping. Then they talk about the phone calls. So on November 5th, 2021, they charged him with second degree recklessly endangering the safety and felony bell jumping, right? And then according to the criminal complaint in Milwaukee on November 2nd, the defendant got into an argument with Erica Patterson during which the defendant punched Erica Patterson in the face. After punching her in the face, the defendant got into a red Ford escape and drove away. And Erica Patterson walked to a nearby BP station. The defendant returned and struck her with the Red Ford Escape. As a result, the defendant's actions, um, Erica suffered a dislocated left femur and a fractured right ankle. Now, an initial appearance was held on the criminal complaint, and the court commissioner found probable cause and ordered the defendant to have no contact with Erica. The defendant's bail was set at 1000 cash. And the case remains open and is presently scheduled. Well, that was dated back then in December 2021. Okay. Okay. Let me take a sip before we get into the calls. So here we go. So on November 3rd, the defendant called his mother, Dawn Woods, from the Milwaukee County Jail. And during the phone call, he discussed with his mother that the district attorney's office would need the cooperation of Erica in order, in order to issue charges. They going to need to talk to her and need for her to be a witness. And she's not going to do that, but she can get the charges dropped altogether. She just called down there and she said, said she, I didn't do what she said. And then if she don't cooperate with them, they're going to have to drop it. That's my Darrell impression. Okay. I know it's not that great, but you know. Okay. And then one day later on November 4th, the defendant called Erica. And during the call, the defendant used emotional manipulation on Erica in order to dissuade Erica from cooperating with the criminal prosecution. And this is what he says. Why'd you do this to me? You know I love you. Listen, listen, please listen. I've come to the realization that I'm not going to leave you. You you have my daughter. I know your potential. What you can be. I want to marry you. Ugh. The defendant continued to emphasizing that he and Erica have a 16-year-old. And the defendant is not. Yeah, <laughs> the report. And not fitting to pay more. It, oh, wait, I'm sorry. It's not fin a play no more. You guys, in this, this is page two. So let me go back to the stream so I can pull up page two for y'all. <laughs> in page two, it spells out finna, F I N N A. <clears throat> then the defendant asked Erica, Will you marry me? And then you got to call them people. And then two and a half hours later, he spoke with Erica a second time. During the call, Erica asked the defendant, are you saying all this shit just because? And then the defendant responded to Erica by telling her he was serious. But because of this situation, you know there's a possibility I might not get out of prison, that I could die in prison, right? And the, def the defendant went on to tell Erica, I'm sitting up here facing 60 fucking years. You have to keep your mouth shut. And then the defendant continued the emotional manipulation of Erica by telling Erica the defendant would die in prison and think how bad that would make my mama feel. Think of how much pain that would be on her. This is all stuff you wasn't thinking about when you opened your mouth. I'm telling you nothing. He spoke to her, Erica, and said that uh, when she thought, talked to law enforcement, I'm sorry, he spoke with Erica to say that when you talk to law enforcement, you should say, I'm telling you nothing. 
All right. Let me check in with the chat to make sure I'm not like going on any further. Yeah, I was thinking that too. Amanda says the only reason he mentioned marriage is so she can't testify against him. I was thinking that as well. If we're married, you can't. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Let me go back. Are y'all enjoying this little reading? Because I don't want to bore anybody. <laughs> but I don't think it's boring in in uh, information though. Okay. So on November 5th, the defendant called her again. And during the call, Erica referred to herself both in first and third person and then attempting to conceal her identity as the victim on the recorded call. I thought that was interesting. So she, this is what Erica says. I tried. That is all I'm going to say. I talked to the people and I tried. Yeah, I said everything. I said a lot. I had nothing to do with you. I said, you know, nothing happened. I said a lot. Just know that. As that call continued, the defendant pretended he was not speaking directly to Erica, stating, long as they know I'm not having anyone contact her, myself, I'm not trying to do, to have no third party thing. I could hear him saying third party. <laughs> oh, what's wrong, Bruiser? All right. And then she says, they want her medical things, her medical records, to which the defendant responded, no, and no, she has to show zero cooperation. That means no, right? Nope. I'm not giving you no medical records. And no, she needs to stand firm. She can't let these people talk her into anything. So then on November 16th, one day after the initial appearance was held in Milwaukee County Court, the defendant called Erica from the Milwaukee County Jail again in violation of the defendant's no contact order. And... During that phone call, the defendant and Erica discussed law enforcement's request for her consent to access her medical records in order to establish the injuries suffered as a result of him running over her. So the defendant told Erica, tell them, no, I'm not signing over to give you the medical records. I'm not cooperating with y'all. I'm not coming to no court. Once she's tell them that and keep stressing that and stay firm, they got no choice but to drop the case. <coughs> Excuse me. During the call, the defendant blamed Erica for the defendant's predicament. I hope she realizes that the mistake she made, I hope she realizes what she did, and I hope she never do anything like that stupid ever again. So then on November 7th, the defendant called Erica from the Milwaukee County Jail on the recorded call. And Erica informed the defendant that she was not returning calls of the district attorney's office. See, I found this very informative. And I'm like you guys. I like Erica. But this, I was like, she's letting them intimidate her. So, um, she informed the district attorney's office that she don't want to see him incarcerated and that she was drinking during the incident. The def defendant responded to Erica by telling her, that's not enough. You should have told them he didn't do anything, that all that was made up. And she responded by saying she did say she fell and tripped and he did not do it. So in response to the defendant information, Erica, to, from Erica, he said, she was supposed to tell them that everything was fabricated, that the statement was a lie, all that. That's what she was supposed to say. And during the call, the defendant said, I can't have any, I can't have no contact to tell anyone what to say because that's going to be bad for me. My Darrell impersonation is really horrible. So I'm sorry, y'all. He called her over 50 times after being arrested from the prey attack. He has no regard for court orders. Yeah, and you're right. During the recorded call placed by him to her, the defendant repeatedly blamed Erica for the defendant being charged in the Milwaukee County case. The defendant started, started by telling Erica, you don't say anything to me encouraging at all. And she responded back, is it all about you right now? Because you know what you did too, right? Like, I think she's trying to say, you didn't, it wasn't just about me. You know what you did to all those other people. So then in response, the defendant blamed Erica. Okay, and what did you do to cause it? You trying to make it seem like everything's okay, everyone's el everyone else's fault but yours. Like, you didn't never do anything to cause shit. The whole cause of this shit was something that you fucking did. You did this shit, and you couldn't even keep your mouth shut, and numerous people told you that shit. This ain't the place for you to be doing this shit, and you still ran your mouth. And I'm the one sitting here facing all this time. You need to learn how to keep your fucking mouth shut. You, fuck you then, bitch. Because <laughs> see, then he says, then he goes, I'm the one trying to get you out right now. She says that. I'm the one trying to get you out right now. He goes, you need to learn to shut your fucking mouth. Fuck you then, bitch. Ugh. 
and a second call between the defendant. Um, the defendant started to call by telling Erica, if I tell your bitch ass to call my mama, ho, that's what you fucking do. And that's the case. If you don't give a fuck about me, then I can have my family get on your ass then. I'm in here because you can't keep your mouth shut. <sighs> wow. Okay. So then on November 11th, he called his mother, Dawn Woods, from the county jail. During the beginning of the call, the defendant appeared worried that he could not reach Erica. The defendant told his mother, you know you get your bail money back anyway, but still, I'm, I'll am i make sure she, she, meaning Erica, do what she says she going to do. And then Dawn responded, because Erica ain't cooperating, they don't have a case. To which the defendant responded, yep, they're going to have to throw it out. And during that same call, the defendant's mother described Erica's recantation in which Erica claimed that she fell in front of the defendant's car while she was trying to pull away. In response, the defendant said, why in the hell would I try to mow her down, knowing I could kill her like that? On November 15th, the defendant called Erica from the Milwaukee County Jail, and during the call, the defendant berated Erica for not helping post the defendant's bail. You didn't put a cent on my bail. Why should someone else have to pay for some shit you caused? Erica informed the defendant, you tried to, but Erica couldn't finish. The defendant responded, nah, 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 nah. I didn't try to do anything, because if I tried to do something, you wouldn't be on the phone right now. That's what you're not realizing. If I tried to do something to you, you wouldn't be on the phone right now. I would have told motherfuckers to do, go do something. You wouldn't be on the phone right now. So don't tell me what I tried to do because at any given time, if I, it wouldn't be on try, it wouldn't be successful. Okay. Uh, that sounded weird, but that's the way it, it's being read, y'all. The defendant continued, you ain't know who I am by now. Oh, I could just hear him saying this. You ain't know who I am by now? You ain't know my little... Oh, I don't like the N-word, but he says the N-word. You ain't know who my little uh, R is going to do what I'm telling him to do? Do you understand my people are going to move how I tell them to move? So Erica responded to the defendant's perceived threats. So you about to do that to me? And the defendant responded, do you understand that? And she said, yes, I do. Wow. Another phone call placed by the defendant to Erica from the Milwaukee County Jail on November 15th, the defendant chastised Erica for continuing to talk to the district attorney's office. You still talk to people. You still talk to them when they call, dumbass. You can't even, you ain't supposed to communicate with them at all. And she says, I'm not. They haven't been calling. They've been emailing. In the response, the defendant told Erica, Bitch, shut your motherfucking mouth. You still can't humble yourself, so if you still talking that dumb shit, I'm going to do it for you. Either way, you're going to do it yourself and bow down, bitch, or I'm going to come make you. Now, which one do you want? You acting like you got some motherfucking protection like you safe, bitch. You ain't motherfucking turf. Remember that. Oh, you on my motherfucking turf. Remember that. Oh, my gosh. I feel horrible saying it like that. On November 30th, um, the investigators, Eric Grubb, okay, I'm not reading that part. The investigators who provided the following information, they verified, Erica verified with them that the defendant called her while the defendant was in custody at the jail. Initially, the defendant told Erica that the defendant loved her on the phone calls. The defendant also made her feel guilty for the defendant being in jail and charged in Milwaukee County, confirmed being afraid of the defendant because the defendant threatened her safety and security. And according to Erica, the defendant knows a lot of people in Milwaukee who the defendant could employ to harm her. And during the jail calls, the defendant instructed her what needed to be said in order to help the defendant. The defendant instructed Erica to say not to say anything, to refuse to to allow law enforcement access to her medical records and to not cooperate with prosecution, including by not appearing if required. <sighs> During the above time frame, the defendant was out of custody on $500 cash bail in Milwaukee, where in the state defendant was charged with two counts of second degree, degree recklessly endangering safety contrary to Wisconsin state statute and one count of felony in, in possession of a firearm. I guess that was the one where he heard his, he, oh, that was the one where he was trying to shoot his nephew, right? Yeah. So that's what they're saying. He was out on bail for that. So that's it on that piece. What do you guys think? Have y'all heard that before? Yeah, he's a gangster. 
You think he, I don't know if he really, these people are probably like, bitch, please, we ain't going to help you. I'm See, I'm reading it so much from his stuff, I'm turning into it. He did think he was the Mafia King, D. I bet he's nothing out there on the street. You guys think that on the street he really has any pull? Like, I bet he doesn't. If he did, why would he have to go to women to have, to assert his power? If he was able to push around men and get men to do what he wanted to do so much, I don't feel like he would use such harsh things with women. Does that make sense? I'm a natural speaking gangsta. Girl, I'm feeling it right now. No pull whatsoever, Bama Green says. Robert says, I'm in SoCal where the gang presence is real and the and Brooks would not have been accepted. I don't I see I just don't think so. I think he's all he he toots his own horn. That's all it is. All right, there was something else I wanted to bring up too, you guys. Okay, so I've got that and then there's this other one that I wanted to read to y'all. Trying to find it so I can read it. Hang on. So this is the one that was filed on November 23rd. This is the complaint. I'm trying to remember why I saved this because I wanted to read it to you guys. This is the original one. I'm so confused. I downloaded too many of these complaints and now I can't keep them all straight. So <clears throat> did you guys ever see this, this document? This was the criminal complaint filed against him for the driving through the parade. And, you know, of course the judge read it in court, so I'm not going to sit here and read it. But do y'all want me to read the probable cause portion? Okay. Let me know in the chat. Do y'all want me to read this probable cause portion of this thing? We've probably heard it a million times on the, in court, but. All right, I'm just going to read it. All right. On November 21st, Detective Casey was working traffic control for the annual Waukesha Christmas Parade, which was being held in the downtown area of the city of Waukesha, Waukesha County, Wisconsin. He was assigned to traffic control at the intersection of White Road, of White Rock Avenue and East Main Street. The stationery for the parade participants was on White, White Rock Avenue from Perkins Avenue South to East Main Street. There were approximately 100 entries in the parade with hundreds of participants and thousands of people watching the parade. The parade had already started and there were numerous people, vehicles, and floats already on the parade route, route on East Main Street. At approximately 4.35 p.m., Detective Casey heard via the Waukesha police radio that a reserve officer was informed by a citizen that two people were fighting in the area of White Rock School. Squads were sent to that area to further investigate. A few minutes later, Detective Casey heard a horn honking from an area north of his location. Detective Casey went into, onto, out onto White Rock Avenue to see where the horn sound was coming from. He observed that White Rock Avenue was filled with parade participants, as was East Main Street. He began to see people spreading apart and observed a red Ford Escort driving southbound on White Rock Avenue. He observed people jumping out of the way of the red Ford Escape. As the Ford Escape was hit at White Rock Avenue and East Main Street, or while it was at that area, Detective Casey stepped in front of the Ford Escape and pounded on the hood of the vehicle and yelled multiple times, Stop! Detective Casey was wearing a shirt with patches of both shoulders that stated Waukesha Police, as well as wearing a black hat with, le with white letters on the front of the hat, which stated Police. Further, he was wearing a neon orange safety vest that stated police on the front and back of it. The Ford Escape continued driving and turned westbound onto East Main Street. At that time, the vehicle was driving at a slow speed, and the vehicle brush, brushed Detective Casey back off on the front of the car, causing him to be positioned down on the driver's side of the vehicle. Detective Casey went to the driver's side window and pounded on the driver's side went door, yelling, Stop! Casey subsequently positively identified the driver of the Ford Escape as Darrell E. Brooks Jr., hereafter referring to as the defendant. The defendant drove past Detective Casey and into the parade procession. Detective Casey chased the vehicle to East Avenue on foot and observed the vehicle begin to drive faster. Detective Casey broadcast over the radio that the Red Ford Escape had entered the parade route and he needed squads to respond in an emergency fashion. 
A few seconds later, Detective Casey heard on the police radio that the vehicle was striking people and was continuing westbound on East Main Street. While the defendant was driving westbound on East Main Street, he struck numerous pedestrians, which included both parade participants and spectators, located on the side of the street. Detective Casey later observed three adult victims in the road on East Main Street. These were these victims were subsequently identified as A, B, and C. All three of these victims had traumatic injuries as a result of being hit by the vehicle the defendant was driving, and all three were subsequently pronounced dead. Victim D, an adult, was transported to Waukesha Memorial Hospital, and she subsequently died as a result of the, her injuries she sustained as a result of being struck by the defendant's vehicle. Victim E, an adult, was transported to Aurora Summit, and he subsequently died as a result of the injuries he sustained as a result of being struck by the defendant's vehicle. In addition to the five deceased individuals, as of November 23, 2021, there were also 62 injured victims, children, and adults, some of which were reported in critical condition. Okay, so the doctors from the County Medical Examiner's Office have completed external examinations on all of the deceased victims. They have concluded the cause of death was multiple blunt force injuries. Um, Officer Butrin, Butrin, isn't that how they said it, Butrin, was assisting the crowd control in the area of East Main Street and Northeast Avenue at approximately 4.38 p.m. He heard on his radio that a car was traveling westbound approaching the parade route. He observed a Red Ford Escape traveling westbound on the right White Rock Avenue, approaching East Main Street. He began walking on East Main Street in the parade, into the parade in an attempt to get the driver's attention, stop the vehicle, and redirect the vehicle from the parade route. The vehicle turned right onto Main, East Main Street toward Officer Butrin. As the vehicle was traveling westbound on East Main Street, the officer was standing directly in line with the vehicle wearing a full city of Waukesha Police Department uniform. He put his hands up and yelled, stop, stop the vehicle, multiple times. Based upon his training and experience, he estimated the vehicle speed to be approximately 25 miles per hour. The vehicle was initially sticking to the north side of the road in the open lane between the parade participants and spectators. The officer observed observed the driver looking straight ahead directly at him and it appeared he had no emotion on his face as the vehicle passed his location the officer continued to yell for the vehicle to stop the vehicle continued traveling westbound on east main street and passed through the intersection of east main and buckley street the officer concluded that if the driver next page was lost and attempting to get out of the parade, this would have been a reasonable location for him to stop and exit the parade route. The vehicle continued westbound on East Main Street and was honking its horn, and the vehicle got to approximately Martin Street. It appeared to Officer Butrin that the uh, vehicle began to increase in its speed. As the vehicle was traveling westbound, the vehicle began getting closer to the parade spectators and almost struck a small juvenile who was standing in one of the parking stalls on the north side of the road as its speed was increasing. The vehicle then got to the intersection of East Main and Northwest Barstow, and it appeared the brakes were activated. Uh, the officer believed the vehicle was going to come to a stop and attempt to make a right-hand turn out of the parade route onto Northwest Barstow. So, however, the vehicle then appeared to rapidly accelerate as the officer heard tires squeal. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that part, you guys. Did you did you even pay attention to that? He put on his brakes and then he just barreled it to squeal his tires. That takes a lot of you gotta just throw your foot on the gas pedal to do that, don't you? The vehicle took an abrupt left turn into the crowd of parade participants. Hang on. <coughs> Excuse me. At this point. It was clear to the officer that this was an intentional act to strike and hurt strike and hurt as many people as possible. He continued to run westbound on East Main Street, trailing the vehicle in his path. He observed the vehicle appear to be intentionally moving side to side, striking multiple people, multiple people and bodies, and objects objects were flying from the area of the vehicle. As officers got to the area of the Subway res restaurant on East Main Street, he began to encounter multiple casualties. Multiple people were pulling at him, saying that they needed assistance with injured parties. Based on the ongoing threat of the vehicle and the occupant, he asked those assisting with the casualties as he passed if they were breathing and advised them to stay with them and that the ambulances were on their way. 
The officer continued to chase the vehicle on foot in order to stop the threat of the driver that the driver posed. Wait, I need to take a sip. Hang on. Then Detective Casey spoke with the officer Scholten, who said he saw the Ford Escape traveling southbound on West Main Street, approaching Wisconsin Avenue, running over people, and uh, he sh Officer Scholten Scholten shot at the vehicle three times, striking it three times. Detective Trusoni spoke with multiple witnesses who were present during the parade. One witness indicated, as I continue to watch the SV SUV, it continued to drive in a zigzag motion. It was like the SUV was trying to avoid vehicles, not people. There was no attempt made by the vehicle to stop, much less slow down. I spoke to another witness that said it felt he felt it was a direct intent to hit as many parade participants as possible. Wow. So that's it on that one. Let's see. You guys still with me? <laughs> I wanted to. I found something else too. Hang on. Gotta pull this screen up. I've got it. I gotta pull it up on a share screen so you could see it. So this is from November two thousand and nine. When he was a, but a wee bit little gangster. Have any of you guys seen this? I have no idea. I have not read through this. I have no idea if I'm going to be able to read it. This writing is so tiny. And his handwriting sucks. So let's go, let's, let me, let me make an attempt to read this for you guys. All right, Commissioner, somebody, um, I would like to thank you for taking the time to read this letter. I know you're a busy woman, so I'll make this letter brief, as brief as possible. I was transferred back to the county jail on October 30th, 2009, due to a misunderstanding on the previous day. I wonder how many misunderstandings that Mr. Durrell has had in life, you guys. I can imagine there's been many. Let me explain why I feel this is a misunderstanding. As you might know, I'm from California, and I've been going back and forth from California to Milwaukee basically my whole life. I've never been in the city of Waukesha, so it's hard for me to get around on a bus line in a city where I have to learn how everything works. Due to the, oh God, this is going to be hard to read. Due to the two medications that I've been taking since October, at times it's hard to remember certain things and also to keep myself up explain that in court do you remember commissioner somebody to make a day long story short I admit that I made a mistake by stopping somewhere I wasn't supposed to and I won't make any excuses <laughs> for that in the time I made the stop, I missed the bus back to somewhere. I know I would be late, but with my meds I take and not knowing where I was, I attempted to walk back to the area, walk back to somewhere. It turned to night in no time and I was lost. After I don't know how long, I called, what word is that? After I got directions to the courthouse, I explained to them that I was lost and got directions. Oh, so he was, he was late getting to court, I guess, or didn't show up in court. I wonder why the fact that I rolled 
that I called wasn't in the report. Once I got there, I showed them my transfer and a work application I picked up with my time out. The transfer was taken and never given back. The next day I was sent back. This was my first and only write up. I've seen people come back from passes late three times in a row and only get a warning. It's, it's I've seen people do the same thing I did and only get put in in their room for three days. I'm no better than anyone else and I don't feel I should be treated like I'm special but to be frank Commissioner Lou, I feel like I was treated unfairly. That was not consistent with how they handled others who did what I did. Treatment should not be dictated by the something who oh by the people who work that day. I feel inmates should be treated equally, not different differently. Oh, he's the Norma Ray of prison, honey. Let me tell you, he's holding up them signs. I had job opportunities that I lost. Oh. <laughs> oh, see, that's why he doesn't work, you guys. That's what it was. I, you know, I kept wondering, why couldn't this poor man get a job? He tries so hard. And here it is, right here in writing. He says, I had job opportunities that I lost. Because this also, it's going to come through my, from, oh, God, I can't even read it, through soon, I guess. I know I've made mistakes, and I'm sorry, but I think it would be fair if I got one last shot at Huber. What is Huber? That's what it looks like, H-U-B-E-R. Just one last shot. I promise I won't let you down. You have my word on that. And his word is golden. Have you guys seen his word? Oh, he's the, the man. I would trust anything with him. <laughs> So that was the other little dinger I wanted to show you guys. I know, Bama Green Eyes says, I read that Don Woods kept writing letters to Drudge Jarrell. I think she's always been able to get him out of his crimes before they thought she could tie. You know what? You're right. I want to see all that. And I want to I want to hear these phone calls. I want the audios. Y'all search all over. I can't get these audios anywhere. I don't think he's going to represent himself again, y'all. I think that the way that they've got it set, well, no, I take that back. That Okay, so that one court where he was in that smaller room, because I can't keep up with which is which because he's got so many of them, but where he was in that smaller courtroom, not the big, huge one that was nice and pretty, the smaller one. Okay, so in that one, he says he's representing himself but it sounded like the attorneys were going to be like his side his like his wingmen on that they were going to stay by him and help him but he was going to do all the talking can you imagine oh my gosh talking about adding gasoline to a fire yeah huber privilege is work release okay thank you did not know that you know what i was thinking about this the other day because you guys have educated me so much in comments and chats and and i think it's because when i started working on these videos with him i i just i mean it was total common comment relief for me i mean just the stuff that would come out of his mouth and in, in trial i was just like doing video clips this is actually i'm scared to admit this this is actually the first time i started like deep diving and do looking for this stuff that he had in the past because all i've been focusing on is just getting these funny videos out to you guys um because they're just so crazy i have one last shot at liberty oh okay thank you just another smith don's interviewed show her that's liz Ildrew. well what do y'all think anybody want to come up and chit chat give me some opinions if you'd like to come up on panel, you don't have to show your face. You can just have a little avatar on screen if you just want to stay some, say something. Amanda says, Anne, when she asked the judge to make the attorneys to allow him to take part in his case, I fell out of my chair laughing so hard. <laughs> there is one more thing I could show you guys. Hang on. So this was uh, 
and then we'll then we'll call it a morning because we got we got to have our life. We got to go do our Saturdays, right? Let me do a screen share real quick. So it says that the above named defendant on Tuesday, November the second did knowingly obstruct an officer while such officer was doing an act in an official capacity with lawful authority. It's a class A misdemeanor. The defendant may be fined not more than $10,000 or in prison not more than nine months. Do you, can you guys hear my little chihuahua snoring next to me while I'm... Hang on, let me lean in. I don't know if y'all can hear. Okay, anyway. Uh, the above named defendant on or about Tuesday, November 2nd, for the felony release from custody, did intentionally fail to comply with the terms of his bond. Let's see, upon conviction of this offense, Class H felony, the defendant may be fined not more than $10,000 or in prison not more than six years. He's good on that. Okay. Second degree, recklessly endangering safety of domestic abuse. So we know what this is about. To recklessly endanger the safety of EAP, which we know is to be Erica. Upon conviction for this offense, a Class G felony, the defendant may be fined not more than $25,000 or in prison not more than 10 years. And further, invoking the provisions, because this charge is an act of domestic abuse, the court shall impose the domestic abuse assessment of $100 for this offense because this charge is an un... because this is an enumerated crime huh and the conduct constituting the violation involved an act by the defendant against his or her spouse against an adult with whom the defendant resides or formerly resided or against an adult with whom the defendant has created a child the court shall impose the domestic abuse assessment of a hundred dollars that's all golly that blows my mind the above named defendant on or about tuesday november 2nd 2021 while in a public place and engage in violent conduct under circumstances in which such conduct tended to cause a disturbance. Contrary. Section blah, blah, blah. Upon conviction for this offense, Class B misdemeanor, the defendant may be fined not more than $1,000 or in prison not more than 90 days. And further, invoking the provisions of this section of Wisconsin stats because this charge is an act of domestic abuse, the sh court shall impose a domestic abuse assessment of $100 for this offense because this charge is an enumerated crime under blah 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 and the conduct constituting the violation involved an act by the defendant against his or her spouse against an adult whom with the defendant resides or formerly resided or against an adult with whom the defendant has created a child Mis misdemeanor battery and domestic abuse uh, on or about tuesday november 2nd 2022 in the city of milwaukee did cause bodily harm to Erica by an act done with intent to cause bodily harm to that person without that person's consent. Upon conviction of this offense, Class A demeanor, the defendant may be fined not more than $10,000 and imprisoned not more than nine months. And further, invoking the provisions, because this charge is an act of domestic abuse, the court shall impose a domestic abuse assessment of $100. Blah, 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 blah. A complainant is a lawful enforcement officer employed by... The Milwaukee County Police Department. So that was uh, that's just stating who did the report. Okay. Okay. Here we let's get to the good stuff. EP reported that she was staying at the American Inn and had heard a knock on the door. She reported that she observed the defendant Daryl Brooks outside the door. Now, okay, so this this was um, this was an interview with her on October the seventh, nineteen ninety. So this is old stuff, but I just think it's important we we understand their history. Can you instead of just imagining it? Okay, so she reported that Brooks was yelling and using profanity at her as she tried to walk past him. She reported that Brooks snatched her phone out of her hand and reported that Brooks got into his vehicle and drove off. Erica reported that she was walking eastbound wait a minute i'm sorry this isn't november okay it's not a that's her date of birth i'm so sorry you guys please forgive me this 
statement was taken November 2nd, 2021, or it was talking about November 2nd, 2021. Ugh. Sorry, that was kind of dense of me. Okay. Um, Erica reported that she was walking eastbound on West Appleton to the BP gas station. She reported that Brooks followed her there and pulled up beside her and told her to get into the vehicle. She refused to get into the vehicle, and Brooks intentionally and without consent struck her in the face with a closed fist. Erica walked away from Brooks. She reported that Brooks then intentionally and without consent ran over her with his vehicle while he was walking through the parking lot of the BP gas station, while she was walking through the parking lot of the BP gas station. Then the officer found him, approached the residence, and observed Brooks's vehicle parked in the rear slab, observed Brooks exiting the driver's seat, Officers gave lawful commands to stop, and Brooks walked away. Officers commanded Brooks not to enter the residence. Brooks quickly ran into the residence. <laughs> of course he did. And closed four doors on officers as officers were behind him and tried to apprehend him. Officers observed Brooks or Erica to have swelling on her lip and dry blood on her face. They observed tire tracks on her left pants leg. Erica was taken to the hospital for her injuries. They revealed that Brooks had an open case under Milwaukee and Brooks' conditions of Bell states that he is not to have any contact with the mother. His mother, Dawn Woods, who was at the location at the time of the arrest. Bell also states that Brooks is not to commit any new crimes. The state will request the court enter no firearms order and no contact, no firearms order and no contact with Erica. So that was that filing. How are we doing in the chat? Anne says the world is, of that is the wording of that is odd. Without consent, he struck her. Who would ever give consent to that, right? Yeah. Don called police continuously after the parade. It's saying her son stole her vehicle. She's a liar. Yeah. I originally, originally, kind of was like, well, she's his mom, and you know. If it was your child, what would you do? And now I'm like, oh, uh-uh. Girl, you enabled him. You knew he was doing wrong. And even up to the end of it, you wouldn't even stand up and say, I created this little monster. And she, I think she may have apologized at one point in time. But, yeah, it's horrible. Horrible. Okay, so nobody wants to come up and chat. I'm going to... I gotta find my buddy Dreadhead. He wanted to come up and talk. So anyway, do you guys, are y'all interested in the Letitia Stouch case? The where she, the one where she unalived her 11-year-old stepson and then went on the news and made it all about herself before they finally arrested her? Well, Anne, I, you know what? We have discussed subject matter jurisdiction. We have proven it. We've done, I've already filed that earlier in the, in the live stream and I will not be readdressing it. <laughs> 
grounds. <laughs> yes. So I'm excited about that one. But okay, so there's next week it's that Taylor Shaw Shaw book business. So I'll I'll kind of deep dive into that a little bit. Let's see what's going on with that. And then we've got that Michael Turney on the 13th of March. And then the Letitia Stout starts on the 20th and the Orson and Orrin Wells case thing starts on the 20th as well. But I, it'll be interesting because, you know, you got to give, it says it starts on the 20th, <clears throat> but I know that it's going to take two weeks for them to do jury selection in the Letitia Stout case. So that one's really not going to start for another, you know, till April. So maybe we can do a lot of coverage on the Orson and Orrin case before then and then kind of pass it around. Yes, just hashtag justice for Gannon, hashtag Gannon's army. Barbara says she does not consent to be called her. <laughs> I know. I don't know why the Orson and Orrin case just grabbed me so much. I guess it was just those the picture of those little boys' faces. And just, I wanted to give the foster parents are not the foster the, the adoptive parents i really wanted to give them the benefit of the doubt because everyone was attacking them at first and i'm like well maybe this you know maybe there's something like some i guess i thought maybe a family member was um abducting them to get them back you know what i mean <laughs> Dee says she's gonna have to adjust her gardening schedule is it planting time right now? My sister was talking about that the other day. She's getting ready to plant some stuff. So, yeah, that case just, mm, it's, yeah, Charlotte, there are too many crazy people in the world. But you know what? I swear, I think that's why we're all, don't y'all think that that's why we're all drawn to this stuff? Like, the way we're drawn to reality TV is because it just makes us feel normal. Hmm. Do y'all remember that case where the father, this was in Tampa, where he threw him over the bridge? That was another one I was thinking about. Because it didn't, I don't really think that case got a whole lot of publicity. And I was thinking about that would be a good case to follow. But again, I don't, it seems like everything I've been doing is about parents hurting children. And I'm trying, I don't want to do only those types of stories. I know you guys are you guys are my trods and trues. Yellow yellow watch whatever. Um so anyway, let me stop sharing this and show you something else cuz I wanted to take you to this guy's channel. Has anyone seen if you're still wanting more from the Murdoch case? Because I'm I'm just telling you right now, I'm not doing anything on Murdoch. There's too much going there's just too many people doing stuff on Murdoch and and I'm I don't want to come in and halfway do it. I, did, I would need to do it full on. And this case started at a bad time. I had other things going on and I wasn't able to follow it from the beginning. Although I have watched a lot of the trial, but not all of it. Um, and even before it went to trial, I was watching everything I could find on it. Because I just thought it was just so interesting. And it's funny because I hear some of these in the Murdoch tri trial so many southern people talking and it just reminds me of the way things are in, in alabama they sound just like the people in alabama um but anyway this guy eric allen if you have not seen his videos on the murdoch case i'm not going to play them because i don't, I don't want to respect his his content start start at the beginning and then work your way up he he's got piece by piece here it is so good. It is so good. And he really dives deep and he's he's from that area. Um I highly recommend you guys watching him. And he also was the one that he actually had was shown in the Netflix documentary. Thanks y'all. Thanks for spending your Saturday morning with me. I hope you guys have a nice weekend and get out and either get some fresh air if you can, if you've got nice weather. If not, I hope you can do something fun at home to relax and 
have a blessed Sabbath tomorrow. I don't, I don't go on lives on Sabbath, so I won't be on lives tomorrow. But I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. And uh, bless, bless you all, and I will see you soon.